April 19th to 4th. Nope. Want me to go back? No, I'm good. Go ahead. I got to go. Got it. Um, call to order the special meeting of the Weathersfield Town Council for today, April 19th. Um, Sue, if you would do us the honor of roll call, please. Councillor Biggs. Councillor Forrest. Councillor Hill. Councillor Lesser. Here. Councillor O'Connor. Councillor Pelletier. Here. Councillor Pentelo. Here. Deputy Mayor Mazzarella. Here. Mayor Rell. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Um, just so everybody knows ahead of time, um, I figured other than maybe Ken, who hasn't done it in a few years, everybody has seen these line items over and over and over and over. So I've asked the department heads to highlight the line items that have a difference, um, either higher or lower. And then if you want to go back and have other questions, um, I think that would work. But I don't know. To me, going through line items and there are no changes, I mean, certainly we'll take questions, but um, I think you're really, if you're looking for anything, it isn't hundred dollars, it's other larger amounts. So with that mayor, unless somebody has a question, uh, Derek is all set to go and he'll hit his budget and then he will talk as everyone will about any JAQs or um, new hires they're looking for, the CNEF and the capital, so. Got it. Perfect. Mr. Derek, you ready? You can be our guinea one pig. Question if I could, before we start. The um, items that don't have any history for prior years, uh, I assume those are all new items or they just been reclassified? Are you looking at my budget in particular? Yes. Um, yeah, there's, I think there's one item that is new um, that I can explain. As we go through. It's like if you look at the first page, uh, travel training dues, there's no actuals for 18, 19, 20. Yeah, they, yeah. Only, they only give us the totals on that typically. Right, Mike? Michael, yeah. can you explain that? Yeah, for the for the actual amounts, it's we don't break it out. That's you know. We don't do that. Okay. Uh, we carry the, the budgeted amount from this year. We've got the breakdown for you. And we can get you, we can get you, de you know, vendor detail, payment detail on any, any line you'd like. No, I just look like if you look at the first line, salaries and wages, you have actuals for 18, 19, and 20. Yep. But on these smaller items, you just don't break it down. Is that what you're saying? No. Actuals? No, for all the non-personnel lines, the group, the all the shaded bars, we've okay. We've got the the actual amounts. All the actuals are in there. You 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 know you go down to the bottom to the total line. That's the total for those are the real amounts that okay. were incurred for those for each of those years. Got it. Thank you. And Tom, if you want the last three, I got them. <laughs> At least I have it going back. Well, it would go back. The no, latest. no. I'm trying to understand how it's laid out. That's all. I'm yeah. good. I can go back in my notes all the way to actual 2016-17 forward I have for individual breakdowns. If you have any specific questions. For historical purposes. Okay. Derek, let me get started. All right. So um, as Bonnie said, I'll just try and keep it brief, the things that have changed. So in salaries, the only change was in our IW, that's our Island Wetlands Conservation Commission clerk. Um, there was an increase in, uh, we have a new one on board and we had increased the salary a little bit. So the increase is a result of that. Um, <clears throat> just to mention overtime pay, um, just so everyone understands, that's typically for my staff during our paving programs. Often they have to be here early or late or sometimes on holidays or weekends, um, depending on what the contractor is doing. So usually that's what it's for, unless we have some deadline that we're trying to meet as far as an application or something 
um, of that nature. And then moving down the list to travel training and dues, there's been uh, some adjustments to some of the line items there. Um, I looked, I discussed it with Bonnie. I'm comfortable with those changes. Uh, some of it's just a little less training, but I think, you know, we certainly make that work. So that's a, a cut of about $1,100 out of that category. Moving down to office machinery and services. Um, we've reduced uh, some of those when talking with Bonnie based on prior years. So that's about a $1,300 reduction. Repair and maintenance proposed equipment. That's the item that I usually use for a lot of the maintenance programs uh, that we do. So there, there have been some changes. So in pavement markings, um, just based on the cost increases we experienced last year, um, I'm looking for an increase of 50 to 55,000 because we spent uh, just about, just over 50 last year. Um, I expect it'll be a little higher this year. Um, there is a new item uh, labeled as guardrails uh, that came up this past year. Uh, physical services doesn't really budget for guide, guide rail installations or replacements. So um, we're going to put it in my budget for when that comes up. Um, often it requires some level of engineering design. So we'll have that in the budget and available um, as needed. Um, the other one that is a significant change is the CCTV. That's for drainage inspections. Um, I had gotten that added to the budget a few years ago. It's been helpful when we have drainage problems and flooding issues to be able to get a contractor in to clean out the pipes and, and inspect them for us so we can get an idea of what needs to be done. Um, and talking with the town manager, uh, you know, I, I was asking for 15000 I I would like to at least get 5000 um, only because to get them into town, I mean, that, that adds up pretty quickly. It's usually a four or $5,000 fee for them to do a, you know, a moderate or even minimal amount of work. Um, so if I could make that 5,000, I would, that would be helpful. Um, I don't necessarily need the 15,000. It really depends. It's year to year. It depends on what kind of issues we have. A lot of the problems we've had, I've, we've already I've done this work and I identified. So I, I would be comfortable with that. Um, wetlands flagging. Um, similarly, it's usually, you know, $800 probably gets me a couple of projects that varies year to year. Um, as far as what I know is coming up, that, that should be sufficient. So overall, because of some of the adjustments, <coughs> that increase of uh, maybe around 6,000, um, maybe more if I can get 5,000 on the CCTV. Then the next few items, there were some- um, Eric, did you say wetlands flagging? Wetlands flagging, yes. What yeah, about is, that part, is that part of like during any like construction progress? process where you have to like flag wetlands in order to make some type of a determination in the wetlands yeah, it's, usually, it's usually related to a construction project that we're in design and we need to do permitting so if we're working in or close to the wetlands we'll usually have a soil scientist go out there flag it and then our surveyor will pick up that that information for the plans for the permitting process is that something that can be born uh on whether it's this item or other similar items born on the applicant in order to sort of do this so the applicant sort of bears that weight and it can come off of our budget? That is their responsibility for their projects. This is for our projects. When, when engineering has to go through, uh, do inland wetlands permits, we have to do just like everybody else. Okay. Um, so it would be for our specific projects. I understand, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, the next few items, there were some small adjustments um, up and down a little bit. Um, the next big item is IT equipment and software. Um, we've, we've had some staff changes in the last year, so um, we were able to consolidate some of our subscriptions. So there's some reductions. Um, the one increase is AutoCAD. I do, now that I have uh, different staff with different capabilities, I do want to upgrade our software to the next level of design work, which will make things easier and more efficient for us. So there's a slight increase in the cost of that. Um, a couple of the other items went down. Just to note on the last two Typically, we had $1,000 for GPS network subscriptions, which is our, our surveyor uses for um, some of his work. We were able to find a, a free network that it works just as well for us. So we just eliminated the $1,000 from that. And then the ArcView software, um, I think that really gets paid out of finances budget anyway. So we just took that out as well. So with all those changes, um, the non-personnel changes was an increase of 0.84%. Overall, it was 4.6% with personnel. You wanna take questions now, Mayor, or you want them to go ahead with the JAQs? <laughs> yeah, yeah take questions for right now on this. <coughs> similar to what Matt had asked about for the flagging, the closed circuit TV, you know, this is God knows how many years 
I've been probably, you've been talking about these and, you know, we've been putting money towards it. Is this anything that, you know, coming off of this last summer where we've had all the drainage issues, does MDC do this for some of the projects that they do? Can we piggyback off of MDC? They typically will TV their own systems. Usually that doesn't involve us unless um, the, the two times we, we get involved, we have them do that or we ask them to do that when we're going to be paving roads to get ahead of it if they think they may have problems, which they usually do. Um, we've had one neighborhood where we've had some settlement issues, both on the drainage and the sanitary sewer systems. They've TV that. Um, but this is specifically for drainage. And we've had that conversation. They don't, they don't do drainage. I mean, we've had one-offs where they were out there and we needed something for a short distance, they'll do it. But generally speaking, um, they, they don't do drainage with their system. So this is for us to have our consultant who we have on call come in and do that work. It's, you know, being that's in my operating budget, I usually, there's been years I spent it all. And if I don't, it gets, you know, swept at the end of the year. And then I, I need a new allocation for the following fiscal year. Okay. How much would the equipment cost, Derek, if we were to buy our own camera? Uh, I, I haven't really priced that out. I know, um, you know, I've heard in the past that the truck, I mean, it requires a whole truck, uh, you know, the robotic equipment, the jetting equipment. I mean, we're probably looking at, you know, six figure type of purchases so, to do so that. So you're not, you're not just talking about sending a camera down there. Yeah, I mean, this is more, they do full, I mean, sometimes they're going four or five, 600 feet into a line that we can't see with a camera, it's recorded. We get a report that tells us exactly where they've seen issues so we can identify. It's been useful on a lot of projects where we can figure out where we need to dig to get physical services out there to make the repair instead of, you know, guessing at it. Okay. And any other question I had, like what I was trying to get to about the actuals, do you, do you know how much we've spent for that particular line item in, in say like the last couple of years? It's, it's not broken down, just the total of all those items. I, I have that information. I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, I, I can know last year or so far this fiscal year, we spent about five or $6,000. Um, I know there have been years where I spent all 15. Um, so it really depends um, on what happens throughout the year. But if you need so that information, I can get it for you. No, just if, if you got the five or six that you're asking for, that might cover at least half of the times or half of the year. I yeah, I, I think so. And and I have a little bit in a PO right now. So if I can roll that PO over and PO over into the new fiscal year, then between those two, I think it'll be fine. Okay. Thanks. Derek, I have a general question. First off, thanks. Thanks for all you do. I wanted to ask you kind of how stretched you and your staff are. We, we hear stories that you guys are pretty stretched and alongside that, and maybe you don't have this information, how would your department compare in terms of staffing maybe to nearby towns um, in terms of the engineering department? Well, um, yes, and that's part of my discussion later. I have some information I was gonna present just to give everyone an update on where we are funding wise and the projects that we have coming down the pike. Um, I did recently hire another engineer, which um, is very helpful for me, um, so I could focus a little more on the administrative side of things. Um, but we are, you know, we are pretty much busy uh, all full time with the regular maintenance, responding to the public, doing our annual programs. So the discussion I wanted to have, you know, at the end of this presentation was about, you know, what other projects that we have, and we have a good amount of funding. You know, how, how we're going to get those done because um, that added that added work and tasks, even though we're capable of doing a lot of that, takes time and that's been a struggle. Um, I would say in the, in the near term, in the recent history, I've been short staffed. We had a big turnover in staff. I have all new staff pretty much. Um, and I had someone come in and leave right away. So last year and a half, it's been me as the engineer and that's been really tough. It's honestly, it's put me in a bit of a hole. So I, I've got to try and dig out of that now, um, but that's something we can discuss further. As far as comparison to other towns, it varies. You know, I, I came from Manchester. We had 23 people in engineering. It operated like a consulting firm. You know, we had like six PEs on staff, you know, two licensed land surveyors. It was a large staff, but that's not common. Um, I think for the amount of work we do here in town and the fact that we've been very aggressive going after funding to get projects done, I, I think we're, you know, we're, we're staffed, you know, pretty average for most 
most municipalities. Some have more, some have less. It really comes down to, you know, how much you're on top of things. I know there's other towns similar size that may have less staff, but, you know, we issue 400 to 450 permits a year for working the right of way. We try to get to all of those and close them out. There's a lot of those things that have gone by the wayside when we just don't have enough staff to be on top of it. So I think to keep up the level of service that we're trying to provide, um, you know, we certainly, I, I feel we're, we're operating as, as, as lean as we can. And I know uh, that um, Derek's going to go through this later, but I have to tell you, I was pretty shocked when I saw who put together the CIP and Tom, you know how much work goes into every one of those meetings that we put together and you're looking at who's doing it all. And that's not Derek's, I mean, it's pretty, it's something a clerical person could do, but Derek's the one who's doing it. And think of all the time that he's not spending now on being an engineer, that if we hired someone even part-time to help with things like that or share it with another staff or department, oh my God, what a difference for him. So um, I personally think they are very short-staffed. And he, like he said, both of us wanted to talk about another issue that's gonna come up with all this grant money, so. So um, before we go into that other position we're talking about, uh, you had requested uh, engineering tech two from part-time to full-time and also a part-time clerk two. That yeah, and just so everybody knows that's page five, what Tom's talking about. So those got taken out or? Put well, I didn't put in any new positions. I right. didn't put in any JAQs, but I prioritized them. So now if you want to do something, you'll see what priority they are town-wide. Is, is, are those two positions part of your discussion that we're going to have here shortly? Yes, yes. I was going to explain that. Okay. okay. All right. Um, if there's no other questions, I can move on to page 51 briefly. Um, Just, um, Derek, just really quickly, it's and I'm just trying to understand a little here. Just under the software section, whether it's Carlson, AutoCAD, Bluebeam, Hydraulics. Like, you know, if I have YouTube TV, it's $59, $59 a month times 12. Like I know what it is. But here they're like round numbers and the town manager reduced them by 800 and 200, 150. Like if you're going to get software Carlson, do you not know how much it's going to be in the next year that there's a adjustment that can be made or is it just like a price and i may be not viewing this appropriately so if you could just give me some some context that'll be helpful so prior to not this year we had three staff members that used that software the cost was approximately 300 dollars per um, license for it so in fact now i have one chief of surveys who uses it. he's the only one that uses this we only need one which Last I, last year was two hundred ninety five dollars. It may be a little over three hundred this coming year, so we budgeted four. Um, AutoCAD similarly, I think it's around thirty one hundred and change. That's the quote I have from them to upgrade to our civil three D software. Um, Bluebeam, it comes in around seven hundred and something. You know, there's a little bit of a factor for some additional cost, or if I wanted to add um, a new seat to it that was built in before. I mean, now I'm pretty much, you know, I'll live, we'll live with what we have, which is we have six seats. So that 800 is going to just cover that. So yeah, I don't get, you know, I, I usually don't break it down to the dollar. You know, we round up a little bit. There is always some changes that could occur. So it gives us a little bit of fluff, but a lot of that's been cut out, you know, this time around in a lot of these categories. Okay, thank you. And then I had one question about CROG. Do we do anything with engineering with CROG? Um, any kind of partnership besides, you know, bids for paving or anything like that? Do they help out with software? Would they help out with supplying, a, you know, a, a regional vendor for the closed circuit TV? Or can we share that with any other municipality? There they do offer they do offer bids you know and, and like we've talked about in the past we use them for pavement markings we use them for crack sealing um i did try to get Krog to put out a reclamation bid um, as we've talked about the state has eliminated that from their contract we use it we've always used it uh, very heavily a lot of towns did um i did reach out to Krog this past winter to see if they would put that out for us in other towns but they didn't seem that interested in doing it so we ended up putting it out ourselves um, we do, you know, I'm involved in the transportation committee. 
They do have on-call consultants for different things that we may have used from time to time. Um, and we coordinate them a lot on you know, a lot of application and grant. But as far as strictly engineering work, not too much other than they have you know, some pre-qualified consultants that we could utilize off of their uh, bidding process. Bid list. Got it. I was on the Municipal Services Committee meeting today and there's a survey that just came out yesterday asking for what kind of services um, do we want to regionalize? So I'll get that to all the department heads and have, because they are open to new and all kinds of ideas. So I'm going to get it out to department heads tomorrow that they could fill out. And because uh, all the towns are hurting to get people to help out right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. That'd be good. Okay, if uh, we, we want to move on to page 51, I was just going to mention um, we had, as I mentioned, we had some staff changes. So my senior project manager didn't start until October of this fiscal year. So we had a few months of um, unexpended salary. Um, we do have, uh, currently we have three vehicles, but we have five staff members that are out in the field quite a bit. Um, so I had asked uh, Bonnie if I would be able to utilize some of the unspent salary just to purchase a, um, a small SUV. Um, I have one of my uh, construction inspectors using a, a very small Ford Focus that's about six inches off the ground. It's not good when he needs to be off-road or on construction sites. So um, we still could utilize that vehicle for more sidewalk inspections, but um, you know, we we she was okay with us putting about twenty-five to thirty thousand towards a purchase of a, a new vehicle for engineering. And that included all the safety lights and everything else that would be installed. That would come from salary savings. Correct. The Yep. Do any of the, does the sidewalk inspector use his own vehicle and do we pay fuel or anything like that? He, he has chosen to usually use his own vehicle. We don't uh, compensate for that. So he, we, we have vehicles we, you know, we can make work, but uh, he, he has chosen to usually use his own vehicle. Um, sometimes he has to respond to uh, fire calls and things of that nature from where he is. And I think that's his preference. Gotcha. Who would use the small SUV? Uh, well, we'd have two escapes. So one would be utilized between me and my senior project manager, who also is the construction manager. So he's out in the field quite a bit. Um, one of them would be used by, by my construction inspector who's in the field the most. Um, you know, Depending on what happens with the sidewalk inspector, I would keep the other vehicle for, uh, for them. Um, or uh, we would utilize it for um, other staff that may need to go out or share it into the department if needed. Gotcha, okay. I have a question about the vehicles. Does, um, so, because you know, my instinct would be just let people use their own vehicles and we'll reimburse them for mileage, but um, is it that they need to have the lights on the vehicles or is that only certain positions, uh, you know, certain work that requires that sort of, um, you know, special features? Yeah, I mean, for my staff, uh, they should have safety lights. They're out in the right of way on the side of the road all the time. Um, so that, that's the reason they would utilize it. My, my part-time sidewalk inspectors with the fire department, um, he has some of that capability with his own vehicle. Um, but okay. yeah, for our type of work, I, I like to have my guys have lights installed. Okay, thanks. Okay. And I guess, well, I don't want to labor the point. I know we're short on time. If any of the police SUVs come offline, can we utilize those? I know the SUVs are new, and we're yeah. You know, I don't want to send you out in one of the old Crown Vicks, but you know if we can pull. I haven't gone to the police budget or looked at the uh, um, line items for new police vehicles, but if there's any police vehicles coming offline, could we utilize those? We always check. In fact. Um... Steve Latarula was wondering of that same thing. And Sally said there's two that might be available. Um, but, you know, they, I mean, they're not in the best shape, but they're usables without having to buy um, another uh, new vehicle, say, for building. But I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Derek, I don't think that's what you're looking for. I mean, I can't see a police, for, uh, a police vehicle out on a construction site. We, we had talked with Sally the last couple of years. I've been asking about 
old SUVs coming off of PD line. I know in that respect, she said there was nothing that uh, they felt was salvageable. It would be more costly to, to keep them running. Um, that was our first preference, but that it hasn't worked out in the last couple of years. So that's why we moved in the direction of just getting something else with the available budget. Derek, if you uh, had to make a priority between the personnel that we're talking about here, whether it's part-time, you know, clerk or technician and the car, how would you prioritize those two? Well, I mean, sidewalks are a big issue. I'm sure you've all heard. I get a lot of phone calls. I was going to talk a little bit more about that, but, um, you know, certainly staffing um, would be my primary concern. You know, vehicles, I Maybe, maybe we could work out something where, you know, if I'm out, if I'm, or if staff is out where they're not necessarily on the road or not on the road a lot, maybe they could take their own vehicles. I mean, we, we may have some opportunities. <coughs> I don't know. We, I, I would look for the staff and figure out the vehicles after. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If, um, if you want to move on to uh, CNEF request, that's page 80. I had two requests in that. Um, one is for a large format uh, plotter um, engineering. We have we have two plotters here. One's black and white, and also a scanner that we use quite often. Um, the other one is a color plotter that's specific for color plots. Um, we use them quite a bit for our design work meetings and presentations. Um, the unit we have is is ten years old, which for that type of equipment is. I'm getting pretty dated. It frequently breaks. Um, it's often down for maintenance, sometimes up to a week to get the parts they need to fix it. Um, so the request was for $4,500 uh, to purchase a, a new color plotter um, to replace it. It would be the same type of plotter we have. We don't need a scanning component, com component which saves some money because we have it with our other one, um, but we do utilize the color plots quite a bit. The other request I had was for um, an F-150. Um, this is related to our survey vehicle. It's a 2004 Chevy Excursion. Um, it's used by our uh, chief of surveys. You know, he's out in the field quite a bit with equipment, tools, supplies, you know, off-road areas, construction sites. Um, we've been talking about physical services the last couple of years about it, and they're, they're aware of the need. It was coming up for replacement. Um, you know, I, I'm just putting in the request now to at least get it on your radar that um, that is a vehicle that's you know pushing uh, 18, 20 years old now and it's it's rusting out. It's still running. Um, they have made some repairs to brakes in the front end in, in recent years, um, so we're keeping it going. But just something I uh, I put in for this year. It was uh, I mentioned it last year, but I didn't put it actually put in. So I put in the request this year. That that cost includes the the truck off the state contract as well as. Um, and, and aftermarket add-on for surveyors, we need um, we need storage compartments that would be mounted onto the back of the truck for their, you know, they have a lot of sensitive equipment, tools, and supplies um, to be able to house them and lock them up. Page and line item, Derek. We're we in fifty. Uh, um, page eighty, the number two line item. Uh, I'm sorry. There's a second and third line items in that list. Which page? Yeah, 81. Page 80, All right, sorry. Thank you. Would the, uh, Derek, would the uh, F-150 have a cap on it to protect all your equipment or? Yeah, it would have actually a mounted uh, storage unit that would have, it would go both down the sides of the bed that is accessible from the outside for them to access equipment that they would need. And the bed would be covered? Yeah, I and I, I, I'm thinking, yeah, I think it's all covered and it has on the side. So the underneath, yeah, everything would be secured. And then the other question I had, maybe I'm jumping ahead. You have on the uh, ARPA requests, you had the uh, map document scanning for 25,000. That's yep. in addition. So we do have a scanner. Uh, we do use it, but we have um, somewhere in the vicinity of 3,500 mylars, and we have a lot of um, planning uh, as well as engineering files that we use permits that need to be scanned. So we had gotten some pricing, maybe it was about three or four years ago now, um, to have a company come in and do that and link it up to our new municipality software. We've kind of we put that project on hold for a while. Um, we I think we had gotten 25,000 a few years ago. Um, there, there is a need for more. We were going to do a certain amount, so we put another twenty-five thousand dollars request into that. 
And the idea is to have a company come in and, and do all that, link it up to our new Municipal software, which just got um, set up for engineering uh, two, three months ago after many years, it took a long time. And now I think they're working on planning. So um, that will, that software, as we've talked about in the past, will provide us the ability to pull up information very quickly and make it more accessible to the public quicker. So are we buying any equipment on this item or we're just having a service performed for the service? Scanning the Thanks. Um, do we have a list of the uh, ARPA funding requests? Well, actually, I took everything for capital and CNEF out of the, the regular budget, and <coughs> technically, they all could be funded through ARPA, but I could also make sure that you guys have the list of, well, I think that's already in your book, um, of the capital committee and what they approved in priority order for capital, that's on 81. And then on CNEF, um, the non-capital subcommittee had done some rank orders on some of their items. Um, that's on page 80. But you know, technically, I mean, I'm pretty sure almost everything could be an ARPA pick. So the oh. CNEF list on page 80, is that um, listed and priority, like, you know, ranking uh, ranked by priority, like no, the, the only the only things that are ranked, Mary, um, would be the non-capital items that went through the subcommittee. Um, Tom and Pat and Kevin. The so like I the ones that are like a high priority. Yeah, okay. that say high. Those yeah. went through the subcommittee and all that. I could certainly, if you want, I could take a look at the other ones and come up with a priority list too, town wide. I'll be glad to. Oh, I, I was just curious. I don't know if, uh, you know, if we need to do that, but because there's a lot listed as high priority. So I don't think we'll get I know, to that. I know. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. Yeah. I just point out that that CNEF list, those items that you see, you know, that don't have a, a ranking, a priority. Just so everyone understands, those were not reviewed by the subcommittee. Those were those were items put forth by department heads as part of the regular budget process. But what we tried to do is to get everything together in on two pages. In this, you know, in this case, um, you know, the items that went through the CIAC, um, the items that went through the ARPA subcommittee of the council, and then the department had requests uh, that came through as part of the budget process. So I, that's interesting. So I just noticed, and I'm just going to throw out an observation, that of everything reviewed by the ARPA subcommittee, everything is high priority except one thing that's a medium priority. So I just think that's fascinating. I know there's a lot of, a lot of needs, but I guess that just illustrates it nicely. <laughs> well, there were some items they wouldn't even rank. <laughs> oh, okay. So is it my understanding, that whether it's the CNEF or this other one, you know, the ARPA request, none of this is actually currently in the budget? Correct. That's correct. And, and then if we were to say, designate some of the ARPA funds for that, would we budget them in and then have a corresponding, like, revenue line, which is kind of like a pull from the funds that we've received. Is that how that will well, look? I will let Michael answer that. He's our financial pro on best how to do that. They would be, uh, they would, we have a grant fund set up the way we, we we're handling this fund. It's a grant. We're handling it like we handle all grants, um, which is there's a separate fund to track everything. And within the fund, we have projects you know, for some of the larger items, you know, to track them, just that that just helps us with reporting. Um, but this does, you know, this does not have to flow through the general fund, I would recommend that it wouldn't flow through the general fund, because it would just complicate grant reporting and, and things like that. And this is, of course, huge for our understanding, like, so with this truck that we we're just talking about, if we think that this falls with under the ARPA guidelines, and is doable, when we look at our budget, we could say, look, we think that we're going to take care of it through ARPA. We're not going to budget for it in the grant, in the 
regular budget. Is that a general yes. conceptually accurate? Okay. Yeah, except you have to remember it's not in the budget, so it doesn't affect your bottom line or my, I should say my bottom line since it's my proposed budget right now. So, okay, so it's, so in order to spend the money, even if it's, you know, more than a hundred thousand dollar charter limit or whatever the number is, we don't have to put that in the budget. If it's, you know, we don't have to put that in the budget. You're saying we could spend a half a million dollars, a million dollars. If it's of all ARCA funds. Yeah. Uh -huh. And not and not have it not be in the budget and be approved by council at a non budget meeting and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. And that and why is it that it doesn't offend like that charter rip, you know, portion? The, it's, not you know, the, it's not the annual budget. Right. So any expenditure isn't an expenditure that's more than a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars that's not in the annual budget is I don't know, it's not a we can't do it, I think, without a vote or something like that. Oh, no, you have to vote, but it would be not a part of the budget vote. We would have to approve the allocation for any spending out of ARPA, but it would not be tied to this year's budget. Right. And we could do that for any amount. Yes, I already asked the town attorney way back when this first came out. Do we have to follow the guidelines with the ARPA funding? And he said no. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Derek, do you, I think there's still, did you want to go over the, um, the position we didn't have listed? Uh, yes, <laughs> I know I'm running over my time here. So, um, you know, if I could skip over the uh, CIP projects, I mean, I guess they want information on those. Um, I was going to speak a little bit more to the full time sidewalk inspector. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is that okay? All right. Um, so, as, as, as was mentioned earlier, um, I, had, I put in a request, I put in this request multiple times since I got here. Um, for for the sidewalk inspector, so that just so everyone's aware, that, that position used to be full time. And in 2015, before I came on board, it was changed to a part time position. I don't know exactly the reasons why, um, but just some statistics to give you a sense of where we are as far as sidewalks. We have 113 miles of sidewalks in town. Um, we look back over the last six years. Um, generally, our repairs uh, equate to about 0.16 miles per year, um, which is about 0.14 percent. It's a very small amount. Um, you know, as you know, there's a, quite a bit of sidewalk in town that's in poor condition and, and needs repair. Some of that is private property responsibility. Some of that is the towns. Um, so one of the large components of this particular position is uh, not only managing our sidewalk contract, but doing work along town properties or in front of properties that are damaged by town trees or other town infrastructure um, is coordinating with the private owners that need to do repairs. Um, that involves, when they do that, it takes quite a bit of time. Uh, we have to um, first identify that there's an issue. Um, we send them uh, uh, a notice saying that they have so many days to have it repaired. Um, with that, then we got to, you know, he's got to meet with the owners. He's got to um, inspect the contractors doing the work to make sure it's done. And that's if they're responsive. If they're not responsive, sometimes it's two or three notices. It's knocking on their doors. Um, you know, we tend to be a very reactive um, a group with respect to sidewalks. When we get complaints, when we have trips and falls, we go and have it addressed. Um, ideally, we should have a more of a proactive program with a sidewalk inspection program that allows us over the course of maybe four or five years to inspect the whole town. Um, we haven't been able to implement that just because I, I just don't have time um, for that. So aside from sidewalk work, I mean, this position also helps us out with um, drainage work, um, they also help out with managing our permits. You know, we issue 400 to 450 excavation permits every year. It's a lot of inspections. And I have two guys, one and a half right now, that try to manage that, um, which is quite a bit of work. Um, they also you know, help out in the office answering calls, helping at the counter, issuing permits, survey work from time to time. Um, so, you know, this is a request I've made many times. I, 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 like I said, I don't understand why it was made part time. It certainly could used to be a full-time position. I get a, I get a lot of complaints regarding the sidewalks, and this is a this is a position that can generate its own work. We 
typically issue somewhere between 15 to 18 notices a year. So that's, that's that many properties that we try and work with. And the reason why we've held it to that is we, we try and limit it to the number of properties we can reasonably manage and get the work done. And part of the reason is because once we've issued a notice, we've put on the record that the town is aware of a trip and fall hazard and we, we work hard to try and get that taken care of and follow through. But then, like I said, there's a lot of coordination that goes with that. There's certainly, we could issue, we could go out anytime and issue two or 300 of these. But for that reason, we try to limit it to the ones that are the worst and the ones that um, we feel we can, you know, reasonably get done in a year. So, um, you know, this is, like I said, this project could, uh, could easily be full-time. I, I, I don't think making this full-time is going to solve all our problems, but certainly a step in the right direction to, providing more attention to our sidewalks that are um, desperately in need of repair all throughout town. Derek, just so I can get my head around some figures, if you go to page five, are we talking about engineering tech two part-time to full-time? That's correct. And that's 78,000? That's 78,000. I believe that includes all the benefits and everything else. Um, the salary itself yeah. was around 61,000 for just Okay. Salary. And if we go back to page 50, staff position number five. So would we have two engineering technician twos? Yes, this, this one is listed as engineer, uh, position six, which is engineering technician part-time. Um, yes, I would have two technicians too. One of them right now is, a, is an office technician. He runs the counter. He handles all our permitting, our map filing. So he's more office based. This would be a technician too. That would be more field and construction inspection based. So where in your seven staff people would the part-time uh, sidewalk inspector be? We'd eliminate that position and convert it to a full-time sidewalk inspector position. Where which are would, they? Which would be a tech engineering tech two technically in the union. That would be the <laughs> yeah. Okay. But where is the sidewalk inspector of the one through seven on page 50 right now? Which position, okay. Derek, is it currently listed under? Engineering technician P slash T. Part time? 22,336, yes. Okay. That's, that would bump up to 78. And then going back to page five, there is a part-time clerk two position. Where would that go? That would be a new position out of those seven that are listed on page 50. Okay, um, so you would have eight staff people. You would take number six, make that a full-time at 78. You would add a new seven, which would be the part-time from page five at 15.3, and then you would have a number eight, which would be the IWCC. That's correct. Just uh, one you know, just in clarification, Mayor. Mm -hmm. The $78,000 is the marginal increase. It doesn't, the, that wouldn't go from 22,000 to 78,000. It's an additional $78,000. That's the net increase in the cost to take to change that position, it includes the twenty three thousand or so for medical. It's not just yep. salary; it's the full cost. So the seventy eight thousand is is the increased cost to make it a full time position with benefits. With the twenty two thousand already, so yeah, it's not. So it's so it's about it's about ninety. It's about a, about a hundred with but it wouldn't be a hundred on the salary line there'd be 20 down on the medical line yep got it got it got it what would the salary line be uh, the salary for step one at that pay grade is uh, 61,273 okay that would go in where line six is got it 61,273 and then the additional uh 20 and change. I got to can't do my math that quickly, but it would go into FICA health insurance. The fine contribution. All that. Okay. 
Bottom line, it would be an increase in all those of 78,000. Combined. Yeah, that's that's the, the total cost of adding that position. We would take out the twenty two thousand that we're paying now out of that. So fifty six thousand dollar increase in no uh, no the net increase is seventy eight thousand. Yep. Oh, that's the net so increase. Seventy eight thousand on top of the twenty two, all in salary and benefits. So if you if you made that change, you'd be adding seventy eight thousand dollars to the department budget. Got it. Derek, you started to, I'm sorry, uh, Mayor, you all set? No, I'm set. All right. Uh, Derek, you started to speak uh, toward it um, with adding this position as far as the sidewalk maintenance repair and, and review and whatnot. Um, you said that they would pretty much create their own work. I was hoping you would go there. Do you, did you uh, do an analysis of what that dollar amount might be of adding that person full-time how much money do you actually think they could generate as far as going out and reviewing these sidewalks well i don't know if they necessarily would generate money for us they would we would be able to get more right. sidewalks repaired and thereby reduce our liability you know like i said we're very reactive in that respect because we 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 are proactive in going out and doing inspections regularly and identifying problems and fixing them. Like from time to time, we see stuff, but generally, it's because there was a trip and fall, and we have a lawsuit now, or because we got a complaint from somebody, we'll go out there and get it get it addressed. So, by having when I say that, I just mean we can give out as many notices as we can reasonably do, which should be a lot more than we're doing now, and be able to follow through on those and get those done in general improving the general quality of the sidewalks and then reducing those probabilities for trip and falls. Thank you, sir. Derek, it seems like for the same cost, you could get three more part-timers for something that is you know, fa fairly straightforward. Why not get three more bodies, even at a part-time level, than just changing someone from half to full? It seems more effective, efficient, but that's just a math game. Depends on how, who we can find. Um, you know, part-time work with that specialty happens to work in this case because my employee has another full-time job and he fits this in when he can, usually it's two or three days a week, um, which leaves us with our other inspector having to cover what he's already doing plus sidewalks when I don't have somebody there. So um, yeah, in theory, we, we could supplement it, it just had, you know, from a staffing perspective or from a management perspective, that's going to be difficult because now I'm going to have all these different people who are all working with the same contractors and trying to make sure the communication is, is consistent coming out of the department. And Bob so Keller the back to what it was. And, and, and like yeah. I said, I don't understand why it was changed, but it was changed at some point. And I mean, $78,000, now you can understand why it was changed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the problem I mean, is so we're way behind on the sidewalks. We got, yeah. I really, since I've been here, there's a lot of trip and falls. I mean, I can't put a number to the, the cost of the attorneys and the insurance claims that are going through, but, you know, we certainly get quite a few a year that we are involved with. Anything else with positions, um, Derek? Yep, the oh. positions in the book, other than the other one you and I talked about. Yeah, just quickly, the, the part-time administrative assistant. that We had a financial analyst that worked for the department that served engineering planning in the fire marshal's office. Uh, she transferred out of the department in January of 19. Um, so we had that position vacant for a long time. And given some of the discussion we've had about the technical work that needs to be done, I opted to fill that with a technical position rather than an administrative position. At the time, um, discussions with previous manager, the thought was we were going to supplement um, the administrative need with uh, someone else part-time or figure out something, you know, a couple of years have gone by. We haven't done that. Um, my staff has absorbed um, that additional administrative work. Um, and finance does help with the financial related tasks at that position. Finance has absorbed yeah. work as well. Yeah. Um, so they do take care of the financial aspects, but I, I've, I've lost in the fact that I have administrative work as far as filing letters that need to go out, you know, answering phone calls when it gets really busy, helping out at the front counter. 
Um, we're really limited in that respect. So th this is just a follow-up request to what I was initially expecting a couple of years ago is, you know, a couple of thoughts were um, there's a part-time position in building. Maybe we can supplement that position with another part-timer that can work for both of us and be situated in the office where they can handle answering calls for both departments and helping out the counter for both departments um, or, or possibly looking at converting that to a full-time position. Um, but it would be very helpful to have uh, that type of capability again, um, instead of my technical staff, you know, stuff in envelopes, which is what we have. Sometimes I inspect them, I see a project manager stuff in envelopes, which is it's not efficient use of their time and their abilities. And then I guess one question, Bonnie brought it up. Bob Kelleher does it right now. He's got a full-time position elsewhere. Would he be the one going to the full-time? Oh, yep. You have to remember, Bob's going over to radio. He's taking John Eichner's Oh, spot. yeah, that, that was the other. Yeah, yeah, so he's given notice to Derek. Gotcha. So we're going to need to, if, if, if we don't get a full-time, now we got to try to find a part-timer who's willing to do this. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've had this discussion with Bob since I got here. It's not a reflection of him, but I, I've said it since I walked in the door that, you know, I've told Bob, I've put in this request numerous times just because he and he understands the need for it more better than anybody. Um, so he's been supportive of that understanding that there's a need for it. So, yeah, there's something that's going to have to happen in the near term, whether it, we have to refill a part timer. This would be an ideal time to move it to a full time position and not have to you know, have anybody lose a job. And are we paying any claims uh, from our insurance for trips? I mean, uh, I don't know, Michael. You'd probably have to call Kerman and find out. I'll get that information. We'll get it for you, Mike. Okay. okay so I mean, I don't off the off the trail, but. If a slip or, I mean, a trip or a fall would happen on someone's private property, wouldn't that fall on the owner of that property? Yeah, these are trips and falls that occur in the public right away. So the way the, the right. ordinance is written, it's, it's the private property owner's responsibility to maintain the sidewalks. Although when somebody falls and gets hurt on town property, regardless of that, the town is the one who gets sued. Got it. Thank you very much. Well, isn't it true we get sued no matter what? Yes, even though it's not necessarily our responsibility in these cases. Right. right. Yeah, they just go to the deepest pockets. So. And, and it is our ultimately our property. So we we're telling owners, the way the ordinance is written, we're telling owners that you are responsible to maintain the sidewalk on the town's property. Those are the types of issues we're talking about. Not necessarily their private walks going onto their private properties. Okay. Okay. Anybody else with any questions before we? We, um, we just yeah have one other position, and then I know Derek's got to go to P and Z. So, and that is not in the book, but Derek and I have been talking a lot, and I sent you information on that. Um, Derek is fabulous about getting grants, but there's going to be a ton of grants coming up. Um, that in fact, we just applied for another one for five million, I think, Derek, right? Through yes. federal funds. There is no way his staff and Derek especially is going to be able to oversee all this funding and all these projects and not either complete them in time and we lose the funding or not be quality that's happening. And we just have to make sure that you guys realize that uh, this is gonna be an issue. Um, in fact, I brought it up today at the municipal CROG committee meeting because I have a feeling we're not the only town that's gonna be going through this. So uh, it's something we're gonna have to think about um, because you know, we've already lost some state money because we weren't using it in a timely manner. I'd hate to see us lose all this money. And Derek, you may wanna speak to it too. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and keep it brief. Does everyone see the, the two-page uh, data of projects up? Can everyone yes. see that? Okay, yeah. so uh, yeah, so I just wanted to, to point out, I mean, we've talked about this a little bit from time to time when I've come in front of you, but um, this is a, a summary of what we have for, for state funding projects. Um, we have quite a bit. 
right now we have 12.4 million. Um, what I've listed here going starting at the top is when the money was allocated and where we stand with a lot of these projects. And, you know, we have projects going back to 2016, um, LOSIP, uh, SIP, I'm sorry, uh, funding that we get for, you know, reconstructing Dix Road that hasn't been started. Um, 2018 Bell Pond Dam, we, we're just getting to uh, looking at proposals from consultants. So we're just getting that going. Um, 2018, you know, Main Street Decorative Lights has not been started yet. So there's a number of these projects that are, um, some have been started, but many have not. And I've, I've got probably after this year, we've got two designed for about $4 million. The, the rest of that money is another, you know, six or seven projects that I have not been able to get to. Um, so part of the discussion was with Bonnie is, you know, there's a lot of, as she said, a lot of funding coming down the pike. Um, we just went through a very rigorous process, even with having a grant writer involved, took up a lot of mine and my staff's time over the last couple of weeks to get data to them so they can put together an application, which was, was very time consuming and much more than I anticipated. So the discussion or the thought was we just really should have a strategic plan on how we're going to manage um, applying for. And then if we want to get these fundings, how we're going to manage the funds that come through to see these projects through construction not just for engineering, but for all the departments. And the one thing that Bonnie had mentioned, I was thinking too, is to have some kind of a, a capital improvement program manager that can help conceptualize these projects, help collect data for applications, get applications put in. And once money comes in, help at least do the administrative portions of the projects. I mean, there a lot of these funding, you know, I, I, as everyone knows, you get state funding, there's reporting, there's a lot of re information you got to provide them throughout the whole project. If we have someone that can help coordinate that from start through construction, it would be very helpful for staff to be able to just focus on, for my in my case, you know, the technical aspects of the project and not get bogged down with all the administrative. You know, like I said earlier in this meeting, I have a full-time staff that is busy with our routine projects. So in all these projects, you know, we've been I've been very aggressive going after funds and we've been fortunate to get a lot of the funds. But now we're in a place where we gotta we gotta start spending it. You know, no one has come to me and said you're about to lose it yet, but we we will get there if we don't figure out a way to get these done. And, and some of these, um, the funding can be used for consultants, and I'm going to get that going as quickly as I can. Some of these were intended for in-house design, and we'll do them as quickly as we can. But, I mean, I'm looking for get all this work done that we currently have. I'm looking year, years out, probably four or five years out, to try and get through most of these. Um, as listed on the bottom of the second page on the right, there are a couple more applications pending. We have over a million for lots of Great Meadow Road phase two that we haven't heard back on yet, um, which I think has a pretty strong application to get because we already got money for phase one, 858,000. And then we just put in this federal raise grant, which is almost $8 million. Um, you know, again, which is would be great. And I just, I, you know, for the town to be able to maximize the efficiency and the benefit of the funds that will be available, we, we just need to have, I think, a, a better strategic plan on how to handle it and how to manage that. So are you asking yeah. for a plan or for a person to be the yeah. coordinator of this? What's the what's the ask here, Derek? Let's get I think, to the I think we're talking about a person, even if it's a temporary position for three, four, five years, whatever it may be, to to get these to get us from where we are. Because right now, and I can't speak for other departments, for me, it's like we're throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. I've had multiple applications for the same type of projects, you know, put in, and some of those are actually being awarded to us, and we have some overlap now. So you know, so what is this? What's the proposal to us, Derek? Is it how much? What's the person called and where does it go in the budget? Well, that's all something that I just want to bring it up for a discussion with the new town manager coming on board. Um, you think it's something we, we should talk about um, to not be at risk at losing potential funds, but also to make sure we, we manage the process properly. So we are um, you know, getting the funds we can use and then being able to actually get the projects done. I mean, I've gotten calls. Um, from Senator Fonfara, who's gotten us some money for a couple of projects. And he's asked me, why isn't it started yet? And I have to explain to him, I, I don't have time yet. I haven't gotten to it. We have two or three projects in front of that. So it's going to be a couple of years out. Um, he, he called me as well. Okay. Uh, is it a full-time position or a part-time position? If you you're know, going to, you know, the other thing I was thinking when Derek mentioned this to me, if you're going to do it, get it full-time because the other, the other piece you're going to have a lot of capital on is buildings um, and projects like that. So you're either going to have to hire a construction firm 
um, who is a certain percentage of projects, or you're going to have to hire or hire a body. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be talking to some of the other managers. Does it? Well, I don't know if it would even work. It doesn't make some sense to do something like this regionally because um, none of us are going to be have the staffing to handle all this federal money coming at us. When we uh, when we did the uh, capital uh, improvement. Uh, 48 items. We included item 20, uh, administrative cost to implement project $700,000. Right. Some of that for Derek's programs. No, I mean, that was only for the buildings. I thought it was for everything, and we just used the percentage of. No, I didn't include any. I didn't include any of Derek's current projects. That's for sure. Yeah, I think the intent with that was it was a percentage of the ARPA project requests. Right. Which are not, right. Which, are not which is separate from all the federal funding that's coming down the pike. I mean, right. that's, that's additional to that. But it is some of your projects per se, you know, dam repairs and so forth, but not ones that are on this list. No, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Derek, following up on what Matt was saying, um, is this a request that you want to make to us down the road when and talk to, I heard you say, talk to the new town manager, because this is a need you think we're going to have in the next months and couple of years, or is this something you're looking for potentially now with the ARPA funds or a budgeted item, and do you have an estimated cost? I thinking from what I'm hearing from the state that th that this money is going to start flowing very soon, you know, yep. by the end of the year. So, I, you know, I, I don't have those answers. I, I, I'm not looking at just for engineering. I'm just talking town wide. I think it's a discussion we should have. Um, okay. I, I think, I think we, we got to look at return on investment. So we, maybe we hire somebody for a short you know, duration that can do a certain amount of work that's going to have a cost, but we got to look at what is the potential upside on what the town can get for funding. Cause this may be a once in a generation opportunity to get funding for some of this work that, you know, we have a hard time yeah. funding capital projects and, and a lot of these capital projects can be funded with through this type of. Um, got it. And I totally agree. It's, it is a lot of once in a generation type funds and we don't want to miss out. So uh, makes sense to me. Thank you. I, I, I would suggest that we need to come up with some kind of placeholder dollar amount for this budget. All right, we'll work on that. We'll put it together with a job description and all that. Otherwise, you're going to be end of the year monies so are going to be coming in. We won't have any anything in the bank to uh, to hire the person with. Okay, we'll get it to you. Anything else for Derek? Okay. All right. Good Lucky everyone. Derek gets to go to P and Z now. Sorry for keeping everyone else waiting. Good luck, Steve. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Right. Good night, everyone. <laughs> They're going to get Thanks, Derek. Don't worry. They'll pay you back tomorrow, Derek. <laughs> well, I'll hear about it. <laughs> um, Steve, the, Derek, so you're out of luck. Was Man. that? Yeah. Was that, Tom? I said, Derek got all the money, so we're I'm that, that's it. I know I'm I'm, I'm out of luck as right. <laughs> You're right. Steve, uh, Steve's yes. budget's on page 33. And Steve, do you want to introduce Anthony? Yes. Um Anthony Barrio, he's the system building uh, inspector. He's on somewhere. He's also on. So I figured it would be good for him to join me to see how the budget process works. Um, like Bonnie says, we're working on page 33. Um uh, the building department budget consists mainly of employees and, and operating costs. We have no additional programs or anything like that. So I'll just go um, through what we have for budgets. Uh, the first section is um, salary and benefits. Those are all contractual. Uh, the big change there is uh, zoning was moved to the town manager's budget as requested by the town manager. Yeah. So we have the zoning enforcement officer that was moved to the town manager and the ZBA commission clerk, which was moved to the town manager. Um, going down to the line items, um, copy and binding, um, it was 800. I increased it by 200. We use uh, multi-carbon inspection reports, and the price has gone up on those. So I just added $200 to cover that cost. 
um, legal notices or legal advertisements. Uh, ZBA was 2691. That was reduced out of 6223, which leaves uh, <laughs> which leaves 3542 as a remainder in that. So that actually came down. Uh, travel training and dues. Um, ZBA was a total of 550 that was backed out of that. And that brings us to 2775. I increased that by $1,000 because the state's adopting new codes this year. Beginning October 1st, we're going to a 2022 state building code. So I need to buy uh, a complete set of building codes plus some secondary building codes to have on, to have on hand. Um, support services was taken out last year, so that no longer exists. Um, office machinery stayed the same. Clothing was reduced by $600 to cover uh, zoning, zoning's portion. Uh, general office supplies remains the same. And equipment went from 300, I, include, I increased that by $200 from 300 to 500, just because we're in the, in the process of looking for better flashlights. Um, we're looking for some type of LED rechargeable flashlights. Um, the ones that we use are pretty beat up. So I increased that by $200. So, I mean, that's it for the basic budget. Any questions on that before I move on to the revenue or? Steve is boring. <laughs> yeah, I know. Compared to Derek, I'm like nothing, right? Um, okay, so our estimated, hang on a second. So our estimated budgeted revenue is $400,000 for this fiscal year. We had some big jobs come in towards the, within the last month, month and a half, a 40, 46 euro road a huge uh, four-story self-storage. We had 105 on Progress Drive, Young Pharmaceuticals, two-story building there. And we had uh, 1210 Celestine Highway, the Starling Medical uh, interior renovations. So right now we're about 401,000, uh, a little over $401,000. So we actually hit our, hit our goal. We're at uh, um, total for construction costs about a little over 23 million. So that's pretty much where we are. Any questions or? Is that revenue on this page or where, where do I find the revenue? Or I should have been writing it all down. Yeah, I don't know if the revenue is, of, I don't think the revenue is available. Michael, where is, what page is that on? Page one and two. Oh, page one and two, okay. Thanks, Mike. Anything for Steve? Well, I don't know about those flashlights. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. We can. We can. We can cut those out. That's not a problem. The cost of you, a recharge. Are coming over my flashlight. I know. You know. That's right. That's right. I'm going to look extra close now. So shouldn't just in the spirit of being in the oldest town in Connecticut, should we just have lanterns? Yeah, that's a good idea. We could do the old. Yeah, the old kerosene lanterns. That would work. That would work. All right, I guess that's it then. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. Have a good night. Anthony is up and the fire marshal's on page 42. Thanks, Steve. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, as Bonnie said, uh, my budget's on page 42. Um, the uh, line items for salaries, um, it's been pretty consistent for the past um, six or seven years when I um, was able to get a part-time inspector. He works 19 and a half hours a week. Um, the workload continues to increase around here. Um, the town gets a lot of work out of one and a half people here, not to mention even the administrative side. I think Derek mentioned uh, two years ago when we lost our uh, administrative assistant. Um, finance does help out with some of that. Um, but that requires the two of us to do probably more administrative work or actually being in the office more than we really need to be. That means less work gets out in the field to try to catch up on reports, mailings, things like that. Um, we also have a line item for part-time um, ins um, inspectors slash fire watch. That's, I have two other certified um, fire inspectors that are in the volunteer fire department. Um, they pitch in for when we have some larger fires or special events, or if I'm on vacation to uh, help out with uh, my part-time guy, because again, my part-time guy is only here 19 and a half hours a week. So if I'm on vacation or away, 
Sometimes there is a little lull here with uh, manpower, but we try to do our best. Um, again, the next is overtime. That stays pretty stagnant. I don't think I've gone over that in the past couple of years. So that's that amount there is uh, should be sufficient. Um, the rest, healthcare and those items or anything I can control. Um, the next is training. Before, um, when I presented my budget, I did do a few, um, some cuts to the budget compared to last year. Um, based on, I do have some leftover money this year that I plan to um, use. So, and then Bonnie came back to us asking for some more cuts. So we made some more additional cuts to our budget. Um, the big thing with training, I'm probably gonna have a decent amount left over this year because the COVID problem still exists. So there's less training opportunities, but I'm hoping it's starting to free up. They're starting to offer more training um, available. So hopefully after July 1st with this new budget year, I can get caught up in some of my training. Um, the next portion there, as you see, support services. There is an increase there. Um, for my part of that is um, software that we pay for for the alarm monitoring at the police station that I manage. Um, the other thing is NFPA standards that I have online um, that I use every day. The subscription series, it's a lot cheaper to use the subscription series and to buy new books every year. So we've that's been pretty successful, even though it seems to be a big ticket item, but it's something I use every day. Um, there's $1,500 for a tablet. And I think when Chief Bailey goes next, he'll probably he'll be able to explain that. Um, the present software system we use to manage my office and the fire department for record keeping, that's fire incidents, training records, inspections, personnel, information, the present firehouse system we have, it's called firehouse software. We've had it for 10 years. We've been put on notice that firehouse is being shut off as of December 31st. It's kind of antiquated software, even though it's working for us right now, it works off internet explorer. Um, it's, again, this is more above my head for IT people, but the, what it's written on is, is antiquated. So they're doing away with that product. Another company bought them, so they're sort of forcing us to go to their product. I know Chief Bailey and Assistant Chief Motter have been working with some vendors to uh, look at some new software to manage that. I originally had a portion of that in my budget. Bonnie had it. Um, actually, it's going to save us money if the fire department purchases the whole thing, and then I split off on it. So uh, that's something we're definitely going to need. I'm just putting a plug in for Chief Bailey because that's something... We're not going to be, be able to operate without that software to manage both my office and the fire department. So I have a $1,500 item in there because right now we have iPads to run the next gen system, which is our dispatch system. But this new software program doesn't work on iPads. So we're now we're forced to go out and buy a Chromebook or a Windows based tablet so I can do my inspections. I also have some money left over this year. So I was gonna use the money left over this year to buy one and then money in the budget next year to buy the second one. So myself and my inspector will both have the tablets when we do our inspections. It makes it a lot easier. Um, we can, right from the location, we can email the, uh, the building owner with the violations or the records or whatever we need to do. So uh, it should work out very well. But again, it's just forcing us to buy some additional technology. Um, everything else is pretty standard in there um, that we use special uh, agency supplies. It's fire prevention equipment um, that we buy or handouts, things like that. Tools sometimes they need for fire investigations to replace equipment. I might go through. We did do a pretty good. We chopped the um, clothing line item by $750. I, again, I have some money left over this year, so I'll stock up with some uniforms. Um, this year with this budget. And I think the thousand dollars should cover us for next year. Did Questions you, for Anthony? Yeah, real quick. Did you, uh, <laughs> the council get you the iPad? You asked for an iPad last year. Correct. The iPad was supposed to replace the older iPad I have in my vehicle. We have not replaced that yet. Okay. Got but it. I still have money in the account this year to be able to purchase that. Gotcha. And this, but it would be a new, it wouldn't be a new iPad. You would need a new Windows-based. 
Right. The present software we have now for fire inspections works on an iPad. The next gen system for our dispatching works on iPads. All the new software, record management software that we're looking at does not work on iPads. It's all Windows based. So we're going to be forced to buy at some point tablets to make this thing work um, to do our inspections. Okay. Quick question from me, Mayor, if I can. Mm -hmm. So first off, Anthony, thanks for all you do and appreciate all the storm updates too that you give us. And uh, you're welcome. Even, though, even though you're a 49ers fan, I uh, appreciate all your hard work. My question is on uh, fire inspections from COVID to now. So in the last two years, were you doing fewer inspections because some folks didn't want you to inspect? And now are you doing more or your regular run inspections? So basically the question, did, did things change in, in what you do during the height of COVID? Actually, I have the numbers in front of me. We actually did more inspections in 2020 than we did in 2021. I, I, had, I think there was more problems getting in the buildings as COVID actually sort of moved on than it was when it first um, we first had the outbreak. The inspection, we have an inspection program, so we have it based on occupancy and based on a monthly schedule. Um, the state has built into the fire code. Some occupancies are once a year, some are two, some are once a year, some are once every two years, some buildings are once every three years. So it works in a rotating um, basis. So the inspections sort of fluctuate depending on the one, two or three year cycle. Perfect example, like a warehouse has to be inspected every three years. Um, a church, a school, a residential is every year. So the inspections are really never um, flatlined. They fluctuate year to year, depending on the cycle, how the buildings fall in every year. So it was difficult. Doing... Yeah, go ahead, sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I apologize. No, I was, you said you had the figures out how many you did in 20 and 21. And 2020 was total of 608 inspections and 2021 was total of 542 inspections. And that's you and a part-time inspector, right? You yes. And that's not even, and, and I'll be frank, the inspection portion of our job is not even the busiest part. It mostly it's the, um, the cust what we call the customer service part. That's code consulting, answering questions, um, talking to architects, working on, permits, things like that. Like Steve said, we have some big projects coming in. So, you know, a project like 46 Arrow Road, we've already had about six or seven meetings with the designers. We go back and forth. Um, they change things. Um, so again, it, it's when you get these larger products, like uh, projects like the medical facility down the South Sea Highway, um, there's a lot of uh, time and effort put in to make sure it gets done right. Got it. Thank you. I just have one for you, Anthony. Sure. Going back to that support services, uh, the town manager reduced that uh, by fifteen hundred dollars. Are you getting what you need to to accomplish? Are you okay with that fifteen hundred dollar reduction, or can you explain? To be frank, that? I can I can use I could probably use another five hundred dollars would help out. But again, I filed, you know, Bonnie's lead. She asked for cuts. So I, you know, I did what I had to do. I, hopefully that will make it. But if I can get at least $500 back, it would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Where would you want the 500 back? In, what, put it into? It would be back into the, uh, where it's cut. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read with my glasses here. It would be spe special agency supplies. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Be support services. I misread it. Yeah, but in, the font's too small here on my computer. <laughs> I'm just trying to find out where the Tom. Where are you saying there's a $1,500 cut in support services? That's uh, down towards the bottom of the page, five two 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 five support services. It says new tablets for new inspection software. TM reduced by 1,500. Look above support services, Mike. Yeah, but the bottom line goes from 38 to 5,300. You move it over to admin services, the 1,500. 
1800 goes over to so it looks like it's now mr mayor well, the, the original the original price tag there should have been 6800 because we we have one of the tablets was cut out got it okay you know, so it, it it actually even though it says reduced by 1500 it was actually um it was actually reduced no, that's correct. It was reduced by 1500, right? That was the tablet that was removed. But does it move over to another line item? No, it would be back in that 52225 account to support services. And I'm actually guessing on that price I, for the tablet. So I'm not even sure if that's going to come in more or not because. We can't just buy regular tab tablets because you know we're doing inspections, we're going to construction sites, so we have to buy a well, sort of like a tough book type tablet because you know if we drop it, we don't want this thing you know breaking all the time. So it's you know you might see advertised at Best Buy and something for like eight hundred dollars, but we have to buy something a little more significant for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? And then uh, Anthony, page eight, real quick, emergency management, because that's in with town manager. Yeah, we'll just go over that. Um, if you have any questions on that, just the um, the emergency management budget is actually line items in the town manager's budget. It's just the stipends for myself and Karen. And then I believe there's a thousand dollars earmarked for uh, equipment and supplies. Um, we got the new, new EOC up and running um, during this fiscal year and actually used very limited money um, from the operating budget. We had some money still left over from a grant we received a couple of years ago for emergency management. Um, and I believe we still have a small portion of money in there um, to buy some of the new technology we bought. We uh, we moved the EOC downstairs um, to the old health department. It is a smaller setup than it was in the town council chambers, but at least now here, it's, uh, it's a little more functional and obviously they'll still let government still operate because even during the storm, you folks may have to gather for emergency orders or things like that. So we wanted to try to free up the town council chambers. Um, that room sort of become a catch all for doing everything in there. So at least if we do have an emergency going on, um, all the department heads can come down here. We have uh, technology set up with, um, with uh, monitors. Um, we have uh, two laptops that can be used. So we can communicate with the state using one monitor. We can watch the weather on another monitor. We can keep Eversource apprised because we can have direct communications with Eversource now. We can log into a portal and communicate with them directly. So uh, we... Uh, with not a lot of funding, we set up a pretty um, pretty high tech system down here. So hopefully we never have to use it, but again, we get these storms from time to time and it, it stretches our ability. So uh, this should work out really nicely. Do we get any grants for that, for the EOC? Um, like I said, we, and again, I don't know, I forget what the fund was. I don't know if Mike can help. We had some leftover money from a, a grant I think we received a couple of years ago. Um, that's where we use the money to buy the uh, monitors and the laptops down here. And I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Mike, but I forgot what that that um, grant was called. Um, but we use that funding for that. I don't remember either, Anthony. I'll yeah. let the follow up. Yeah, I believe there's like another thousand dollars still left in that in that grant. Um, but again, we were able to allocate that money. Um, and also, every year we get the uh, the emergency grant from the state of Connecticut. So we get that funded every year. And I think it actually covers the stipends in the um, operating thousand dollar operating funds we get for emergency management through the grant we get every year from uh, yep. um, Department of Emergency Management Homeland Security. And we did apply for that grant. We should be getting the um, get notification within the next month or so to see if we got it. And I'm sure we're getting it. Bonnie, would this be something that the new grant writer for us would be able to look at yes. you know, 
other she, uh, she actually met with all the department heads this morning. So Anthony, email Sonia and tell her you're looking for something. Yeah, we, we talked briefly today. So yeah, she, she's on board with that. She, she, was, she was very helpful. So I'll reach out to her to see if we can get some, some additional funding. Uh, yeah, it worked out pretty well, so. Okay. And just, just an update on the um, Everbridge that we purchased. Um, I was out of work for a few days because I was ill. Karen's ill now, so she's been out for a couple of days. But we have the backbones. We built the backbone of it, so you should be seeing it out in the street shortly. Um, maybe in the next two or three weeks, we'll start advertising it, and folks will be able to uh, opt into it, and then we'll be able to use it for routine and emergency information to, to notify the public. Much like I said now with emails, we'll be able to use the Everbridge system um, to update folks on different issues in town. Okay. Thank you, Anthony. You're welcome. Um, all right, fire, Chief Bailey, page 44. Can you hear me? Uh, barely. How about now? Yeah, that's better. So you just want to hit on the highlights of your department, Mr. Bailey, and some of the things I already emailed to you to address. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can hit on the on the highlights. The uh, where the big increases, if they if you are. Um, we did a two percent for our part time clerk, and a three percent for our officers down to uh, the secretary and treasurer. Uh, that this line also includes it from an $8 a call to a $9 a call addition. Uh, you know, as you all know, these are 27, you know, 24 and seven employees, you know, at a very part-time rate. And uh, it really wasn't a huge increase, but an increase nonetheless. Uh, that's the salaries and wages line, uh, the Fikers workers comp pension, uh, most of these have stayed pretty similar within a couple hundred dollars. Um, support services went up. Oh, somebody had a question? No, I don't think so. All right. Uh, the storm standbys with the new weather normal, uh, with reduced numbers, we, I've been putting guys in firehouses. No, oh, go ahead, Bunny. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. I'm sorry. No, um, you know, we put guys in the, the men and women of the fire service into the firehouses, you know, when we got a big snowstorm, hurricane, whatever's going through. Um, support services is within a couple thousand. That's the storm standby. Um, the water's actually showing, I don't know if the water's up and that's Bonnie. We, uh, you had called MDC or somebody had called MDC on that to get yeah. an explanation. Okay. You know, that is a, that's a number set for our hydrant rental through MDC. Um, electricity, natural gas, that's all through the town. Heather gives us those numbers. Uh, the rentals, the facilities, that's our Newington training tower. Uh, that's a set $1,500 cost. Um, the 500 addition in office machinery is simply uh, raising in service costs, which most of these are here. Um, the repairs, property and maintenance, uh, that, that shows a $6,700 increase. That's, that's simply just the cost we're paying. We're, we have overages in most of these lines this year, and I honestly don't see it getting any better. Um, this is a cautious estimate but we're hoping we can get it done at that number. Uh, the diesel fuel is obviously a set price through the town. Uh, cleaning and household supplies, uh, obviously with COVID, not only are we getting more things, but they're more expensive. Uh, specialized agency went up about $1,200. That's, that's simply just an increase in the cost of that we're putting out um, clothing, 
is a uh, gear increase um, standard, the standards change and we have to keep up uh, with the new gear. Um, pretty much everything is, is normal. When we get to the IT equipment and software, Anthony touched on that. And I see Derek Sola is on. So I think he would be the guest, the best guy to explain all of that. We've worked with Derek. And again, this will be a, a mutual venture between the fire department and the fire marshal's office. Uh, pretty much a half to do. Um, the equipment, the equipment is simply the price of equipment. It just continues to rise. And, and again, this we're, we have overages in that this year. And, um, you know, hopefully we can do it with this number. I think we can and, and keep everything maintained, updated and, and have the best to protect our community. Questions? I have one, uh, Rich. Yeah. Go the clothing. Yeah. Turnout gear and so forth. Do we we have uh, less people on staff, correct? Is yes. So wouldn't, wouldn't that number tend to go down even with the price increase of the materials or? Well, it depends on the age of their gear. The gear is only good for a certain amount of time. And once it shows wear, it gets replaced. Um, this I actually had in our um, CNEF initially. And, and I think I can sit down with Bonnie and, and work with this number a little bit. Any other questions? If not, um, Chief Bailey could go on to CNEF. Hang on one. Uh, sure, I don't want to nickel and dime. Pest control, it looks like it's going up at company three. Do we have a problem over there? Um, what line are you on, Mr. Mayor? Pest control under on page 45 under 52275. Um, it went from 540 to 2160. Um, hang on, I'm not seeing it. 540 last year proposed 2160. I just want to get an idea of what's going on. All right. Well, you're under, um, I'm sorry, what were you under again? Uh, 52275 repairs and maintenance. Yeah. And About five up, Rich. Yeah, I don't have that breakdown in front of me for some reason. That That is blank. I will look into that tomorrow morning. That That's uh, absolutely not correct. All right, we'll get back. I will, to yeah, I'll report to Bonnie on that in the morning. Okay. And then PPE inspection in the same column. What do we do with, is it personal protective equipment? Is that yes. something to do? Yes. All of our equipment, all of our equipment, gear, packs, everything we use. Okay. I mean, it's only a thousand dollar increase, but I don't know what we had prior unless the 12,000 was brand new last year. And we're just bumping it up by about a thousand this year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, Mr. Mayor, it's just, it's just the cost of us, you know, these things that have, they have to come in, everything has to get flow tested, tested, you know, gear repairs. And it's just the price of things are just going up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, clothing's up eight thousand. Um, building materials and supplies five three three four five went from three thousand, and then there's nothing this year for that. Miscellaneous improvements, hardware, and supplies. Just wondering where, what that savings is. Uh, 
Uh, uh, that went from 3,000 to 4,000. Oh, we moved the 4,000 over to general. Yes. Got it. Yes. Okay. I just go down. IT is a big upgrade that's nearly double. Yes, and initially, and I say initially, I've worked with Mark Motter, Anthony, and Derek. I should say they've worked together. And it looks like a $30,000 program, which we, the increase this year would be to do it in three years, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. And the rest would be in the upgrades for the, uh, for the tough folks or, you know, what have you that, that Anthony touched on. And I think Derek would certainly do a better job than I. How about the last item, uh, Chief? The uh, furnishing. The furnishing. The fur. Yeah, she. Uh, Bonnie cut that two thousand dollars. I mean, to be honest, I could use twenty thousand. It's. It's just you know things are degrading. Um, you know, we're certainly going to make that work. You know, that's that's definitely an item that has nothing to do with our safety, and you know, we'll we'll make that work. That's not a problem at all. Does that go into Firehouse One? That Whatever. is no, it got moved into that's the general administration line that would I would split that between the three companies somehow or just replace the worst and move forward. How are we doing with furnishing in company one? I know that's been a sore subject. Yeah, it's um, I mean, it's good. Not great. Uh, the, our watch rooms really take a beating. And that's that's really what I would direct you know, any monies we could get back would be into the watch rooms. You know, that equipment just is, you know, it's, it's all season, all weather, you know, gear, no gear. It's, you know, it does take a beating. <clears throat> okay. Anybody else with any questions? Uh, Rich, do you want to go over CNEF? I That's certainly page 80. Um, I think is everybody there? Yep, we're here. No, no, just on that page. It, th this list was obviously um, longer. Uh, Bonnie was given the list and and has made some cuts to it. Um, the uh, what do we have in it? We have battery fans. Those are our exhaust fans that are aging and are going to be in need of replacement. So we're looking for the upgrade to go to the battery fans, which uh, like everything else, it just be easier, more efficient. Um, you know, we won't have to drag generators around. Usually when using these exhaust fans, it's powering off a truck. You know, obviously, if there's an issue in the house, we're not going to be using their power. Um, the second thing on your list, I believe is the ticks. Those are called, those are thermal imaging cameras. Those look into walls, look for down firefighters, uh, gives us a heat signature, a temperature, uh, for cold and hot. Uh, the third thing I believe that you have is the four gas meters. You know, that gives us the hazardous environment readings, you know, basically everywhere we are. We use those before, uh, after fires, uh, CO issues, things of that nature. Uh, the pagers, the pagers are just, they're just an every year thing. They, they don't have a huge amount of life to them. Um, the pagers we're using now are supported. So this would be adding, you know, as they fail and we replace, this would be replacing all of those. Uh, 14 is a good number for that. Uh, hose, <clears throat> hose goes through, uh, we test it every year. We have it tested every year. And this is for replacement and additions for some spare. Uh, this is a number that I could meet with Bonnie with and uh, we could work with that a little bit. 
And then uh, I think the last thing you have on your list is the gear. <clears throat> the gear we can sit down. I mean, it's a small number, but we could uh, we could move a, move on a little bit there. What's the difference between this firefighter turnout gear and what Tom mentioned in the budget? What do you mean the difference? Well, you had 25 in the other, didn't you? Uh, in the 30. Other. 30 in, in what? I don't know what you're Operate. saying. So, Rich, you had money in the operating budget, but you also have it in the CNEF. Okay. This year's operating? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, he must have. Um, let me find this year's. It was the last item on uh, page 46. No. no. Yeah, I, I got it in three separate pages. It wasn't 46, if I'm mistaken. Yeah, page, page yeah, 46. Yeah, turn out, turn out gear full set. 21 22 was 25,000. The 30, the 21 22, the, that whole line is 42,000. And it covers, uh, you know, class A's, it, class B's, class C's, pants. It covers everything. So it's not just gear. Yeah, but you have, you have turnout gear full set 30,000. And then on the uh, capital, you have, Another forty-eight thousand. Is that what? Is that a duplication, or is that what you really? Yeah, it, you know, it must be because I'm I'm looking at turnout gear full set for twenty-one, twenty-two is twenty-five thousand. So that's that's not nearly that's not thirty sets of gear. Yeah, Rich, why don't you and I meet on this and go through it again? Okay. And real quickly, the chief, the thermal imaging cameras, is that to replace cameras we already have? Is it an additional four new cameras? Uh, yeah, no, it would be four new. You're talking about the thermal imagers? Yes. I'm having trouble hearing you. Yes, yes. it would be it would be replacing. We'd, we'd leave two because they're not just as the technology advances, they just don't support it. So we'd leave we'd leave two in the system as spares and replace on the apparatus as new. Okay, thank you. If Rich, if we buy the air packs with you want to tend with thermal imaging units, do you still need to buy the cameras? Yes. We I would take them off the packs for now. That is something they could add on as years go by, depending on which packs we buy. In other words, you wouldn't you wouldn't take the option of the thermal imaging units with the new packs. Is that, is I, that what you're saying? I would just just in officer packs. We wouldn't be outfitting all the packs. It would just be officer packs. You're talking about the capital improvement line. Yeah, I mean, you have in CNEF you have the thermal imaging cameras, four mm -hmm. of them for yep. sixty. Yeah. If if we buy air packs with thermal imaging capability, yes. do you still need cameras? Yes. Can can you tell me why? I don't understand. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't outfit all of the packs with a thermal imaging camera. Right. You talked about okay. I'm I'm sorry, you cut out. You talked about 10 air packs with imaging units yes and that's just the officer seat this would give the ability for others to have it it's it's a very it's a high cost you know if you did all the packs with it i think having the officer who's leading the lines into a fire with that capability um would be fine and then we would you know the next administration can can add to the packs as much as they wanted i'd still want the handheld units without question so, Chief, what basically I, I guess this is my, might be what Deputy Mayor is asking is what what would you need to just keep your team safe? Like baseline, what do you need to keep your team safe and be able to do your job for the community? For the tick cameras? Correct. All four. Yeah. 
And those would be handheld by? Those are handheld units, yes. By officers? Uh, then, go ahead. And then for the air tank apparatuses, you wouldn't get every single one of them with a thermal imaging camera. Well, that's where I had talked to the deputy mayor. We would go with 10 initially and they could add on. This would be new technology for us as far as putting them on the packs. So if I'm looking on page 81, and I don't know if you have it in front of you, but under the um, capital improvement, number 16, mm -hmm. would that decrease the 618,000 by any or? No, we put in the 10 for that. You I think in what, he, what he's saying, Mike, is he, he needs 10 air packs with thermal imaging units plus four held, handheld imaging units. Is that correct, Rich? Uh, well, the out of the CNEF, it is the four. Yeah. Okay. Out of the capital improvement in that number is 10. And those 10 ticks are included in the 618,000? Yes. Okay. But they're, they're a lot smaller. They go on the pack. That's why the, the prices may not look like they, they match because they don't. The ones on the packs are cheaper. And by cheaper, I mean by cost. Mm -hmm. You know, they're smaller and they're integrated with the pack. How many um, thermal imaging cameras do we have now and how old are they? Uh, I don't have the ages, but we do have four now. Okay. Any other questions for Chief Bailey? Rich, you have anything in capital? <coughs> well, the uh, the pack replacement, right? At number sixteen, which with with no disrespect, I don't know who makes the list, but I, I would capital think capital committee. I would think that firefighter safety would would be a little more important than miscellaneous drainage improvements. Uh, to be number sixteen. Uh, is a little discouraging. As a matter of fact, it's very discouraging. Um, you know, some of the things I see one through 15, actually I can tell you all of one through 15 don't match firefighter safety. You know, how, how can anything, you know, be above fireman breathing? I, I just, I don't understand that. Maybe this isn't the quorum to discuss that, but I think moving forward, you know, there should probably, and no, Bonnie, I don't want the job. There should probably be somebody from fire or police on it. I think, uh, Rich, I think what you might be looking at, and I wasn't privy to how the different individuals voted, but there was four people on the committee in Capitol, I believe, that voted. And so one through 16 could have all been fours. You know, in other words, they could have all been equally ranked as a mandatory requirement. So that's okay. that's the only thing. Back. Okay. I know their their priorities were safety and mandates before everything else. So that's the only thing I can think. I I can't imagine I'm participated in all those meetings. I can't imagine that anybody felt that your guys weren't important compared to a dam repair. Mm. Hey, Chief, I just, I just want to throw in there, this is absolutely the forum to make a case for your budget. Um, by all means, if you feel that something of that nature needs to be put on an important level, then this is the place for you to make that, uh, that call. Um, and, and Chief, maybe, maybe you want to address number 16 and kind of explain what that is, because not everybody may may know what that is that's replacing all our air packs every one of them 68 number 
Um, they were replaced 15 years ago through a grant uh, through the state, and we are currently in the grant process again. It can, I can tell you that it is made through the first hurdle, and we're approaching the second hurdle. Um, it's a FEMA grant, and uh, you know we're waiting uh, on news. It should be awarded. Uh, what they say is June, maybe July. So it, it would basically replace all of our breathing apparatus. You know the sky, the the air packs that we wear going into hazardous atmospheres, fires, what have you. Every one of them. That's why the number's so big. Anything else for the chief? All right. Library, which is page. Sixty-three, Brooke. Will you um introduce everybody, please? Yes. So thank you to the town council for having this meeting. Um, we have joined by with library board members Martha Keneally, Hannah Granfield, Mary Pel uh, Mary used to be on the library board. <laughs> I'm just going, Lori Rona. Um, I'm trying to look across. Uh, Michelle DePaulo. Diane McAdams, Kristen Michaels, and I, I don't know who this other phone number is, if that's a library board 280-5734, perhaps not a library board member, um, but uh, yeah, so thank you for uh, uh, having us this evening. Um, I'll just get started. Uh, I'm going to do a share screen, which I believe I can do. So as you heard again and again and again last evening, uh, the library is truly one of the treasures of the town of Wethersfield. And we proudly provide for the informational and educational and recreational needs of the Wethersfield community and hope to continue to do so uh, moving forward. In this uh, infograph, which is a lot of the data that we've compiled in the proposed budget book that you have all received. Um, in the past previous fiscal year, we had over 10, nearly 11,000 library card holders. We were able to offer 178 programs. Uh, we circulated 186,000 items, um, which is above the state average. Uh, people asked over 18,000 questions. We do record that. Um, and the library's computer and Wi-Fi network were accessed over 6,500 times. Um, so we're quite, quite proud of that. Here is a sampling of what we are currently doing. We just recently soft launched our Weathersfield Reads. And in collaboration with the Historical Society and the high school, we did a one book, one town, uh, our town, the play. Um, and that was quite a successful uh, program that was culminated at uh, the Historical Society. That was great. Um, we recently had a robotics uh, demo for kids during spring break, um, which went over very well uh, with, a, with a high school um, that specializes in science. Um, and so the kids and family seem to really enjoy that. Um, we host, uh, hosted a program recently, uh, Frugal Living. Uh, we are very sensitive to people's budgets and we actually hosted a, a, pro, a Zoom program for that, uh, which is great. And then coming up in case nobody knew, um, uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day is coming up and we do have a, a Holocaust survivor coming to speak who was uh, lived in the Jewish ghetto in Budapest. Um, uh, during that time, and he's going to share his memories. Um, so that's an example of, of things that we have going currently. And then looking forward to the future, um, which I believe is a very exciting future here at the Weathersfield Library, is we recently received um, with a massive lift by Amy Bellow, uh, one points and other state legislators as well, um, uh, 1.7 
million dollar grant uh, to fund the library redesign project. The project is currently funded at 1.989. Um, so we're still a couple hundred thousand dollars short, um, but very, very excited that this plan uh, can move forward. Um, and it's the library design project for those of you who, who haven't had a chance to um, see the conceptual designs of this is ex massively expanding the teen space renovating the mezzanine level, lower level carpeting, and redesigning the front room, uh, the entrance area of, of the library. So very, very excited about that. What I would like to uh, then go into is the email that I forwarded to all of you today, which is a slightly different version of the pages that you received from um, Mike O'Neill. And so this, I, I put it in the same format and I will show you where the differences are. Um, but we'll go through this uh, very quickly, uh, line by line. Um, at the top half of the document um, is the salaries. Um, I'm at the top as the library director um, the union full-time and there are union part-time staff and um, they're all slated to contractually receive 2% two percent two uh, wage increases um, and this current year they received a 2% wage increase and next year 23-24 they'll be receiving a 0.5% uh, increase and so over a three-year contract it is 4.5% percent which is not keeping up with inflation um but that's that's the current uh that's what it currently is it's in there it's calculated in there um the non-union part-time staff um is uh, slated to either receive a minimum wage increase or a two percent pay increase uh for the fiscal year 22-23 this current year um they did not receive anything except what was required by minimum wage. So we froze the wages of non-union part-time staff. And moving further down, uh, so that total is about a $19,000 increase for uh, salaries. Employee insurance, I mean, it's gone down a little bit, about $900 it looks like. Um, health insurance is an increase of $53,000, oh, sorry, I jumped too far. Uh, pension is an increase of the defined benefit. The pension is an increase of about $16,694. The defined contribution is an increase of about $3,500. So the total for all that is over $90,000 of an increase. Um, so there's that. Um, moving further down, uh, workers comp is up a hundred dollars. I've kept copying and binding flat. No, I actually, I'm sorry. I apologize. I, de I decreased that. Uh, travel training and dues remains flat. Professional services, which is the insurance for the library board and their fiduciary responsibility that we are required to carry um, is just under a thousand dollars. I do not, it has not really gone up very much and we do do a market check from time to time on that. Um, library programmings, we have kept flat even though we would really like to increase that. Technology support services, I did add $20,000 um, and I'm making up about 8,000 of that elsewhere. Um, and it is, if you, if you see the last, the previous fiscal years under tech support, where it's 120,000, 150,000, 117, we're averaging a hundred and I think 26 or $29,000 a year in tech support services. So that is our electronic databases. Um, some of the places held flat during the pandemic and now they're starting to increase. It also includes the cost, which is nearly $40,000 of our consortium, our shared catalog, um, which is really important and is a cost savings. 
Um, and so that's our, our date, mostly our databases. Custodial services, um, we did achieve a savings this year. So many thanks to uh, Mike and Sally and other staff who worked on the RFP for this, um, for custodial services. So it did go down. I am, it's a little too early to say how pleased I am, but I am pleased uh, thus far. Um, but that was has been a savings of about $4,000 for us. Postage and delivery remains flat at $100. Labor relations, we don't have any cost, anticipated cost. Telephone and communications are, are basically our internet. $12,452 of that amount is for telephone. The remaining amount is our internet. We do get it different, a lower internet price than say other departments because we are a public library. Um, so we're getting a very, very good rate. Um, our office machinery services is our support contract uh, for our current RFID. Um, and that's held flat. It did come down, um, but we are on dated equipment and we would like to you know, upgrade that. Uh, repair and maintenance, uh, we are at $4,000. Um, and that's just repair and maintenance around the building for, you know, different things that we need to fix. Um, specialized agency supplies. A lot of this is our barcodes, um, the wrapping for the books, um, and that's at $8,000. And you can see that we've lowered that over, over time, um, that cost and what we're spending on that. Um, and, and we do get from other consortiums discounted rates for that. Um, so we're always looking for a bargain on, on any supply we can get. Uh, building materials uh, was lowered down by like $59. Um, this, this budget used to be, I wanna say in the $6,000 range. Um, we have lowered that this current year. Some of these uh, supplies are things that uh, ARPA grant that the library received um, last year, um, we've been able to kind of pre-purchase, say, um, paper towels and, and uh, some cleaning supplies that we need. Um, so we were able to pre-purchase that using ARPA money. So we did lower that a little bit. Our general office supplies is uh, at $9,000. Our library books, and other media, you know, other things that you can check out um, is now at $100,000. I did lower that. So that's another $3,000 that I, I lowered in this category. And then $10,000 for our IT equipment and software. And so we refresh and replenish and, and whatnot. Um, and so we've, we've been able to maintain a, you know, a schedule that we, you know, rotate the computers out every five years or so from their use uh, and whatnot from that. So um, what is reflected in the budget in the book is where the town manager has put in a $100,000 reduction, um, which I and the library board do not believe that we can sustain and keep our current service. Um, and that would put us back a couple of years to a, a budget from a couple of years ago. Um, and, you know, that's difficult when you have health insurance driving ha half that cost and, you know, contractual, you know, salary increases and whatnot. So, um, but that's, you know, that was uh, put into the, the budget book and, and I understand that, um, but, and it was actually uh, finance needed to tag it into a specific line. They tagged it into IT equipment. So you'll see in parentheses about a nine, a negative for $90,000. Um, and that is just not what, you know, and that's just not, yeah, we're not negative 90,000 IT equipment, but the 100,000 had to be put somewhere. Um, but in this, what I am showing you on the screen and what I emailed to you earlier today does not reflect that. So um, the town manager's uh, proposed budget was 2,062,399. 
and the library board's proposed budget is two million one hundred and sixty two three ninety nine. Um, and if you look below in the chart here on the screen, you can see that ninety two thousand is personnel related and twelve thousand is non personnel related. Um, you know, so that, that there's that. If there are cuts to um, the library board's proposed budget, 2.162399. Um, the process is, is I make recommendations to the library board for their consideration. And my recommendation would strive to have the least amount of impact to the public as well as to the staff and still maintain quality of service. The library board would have final approval of where those cuts would take place. What would be suggestions of cuts obviously depends on the actual cut, um, which I'm hoping there's not at all. But it could be less hours of service. We're looking at weekends. We're looking at evening hours. There would be less programming. Um, there would be reduction in collections, both online and in print collections. And when we have a reduced or diminished collection, it, it does not help us leverage with other libraries, um, their collections. Um, and so that, that's, that's a problem. And when you are reducing these types of things, you are most definitely looking at reducing the hours of staff, starting with part-time non-union staff and then moving towards the union staff. Um, a 1% cut is about 21,000. A 3% cut is in the $60,000 range and a 5% cut is over just over $100,000, $108,000 with this particular budget. Other sources of funding, um, there is a misconception that the um, proposed library board budget that was approved during the March uh, special library board meeting would somehow be offset by funding from other sources, either the Friends of the Weathersfield Library, donations, or the utilization of investment income. It is extremely important to note that these other sources are limited, often restricted, and intended to supplement and not supplant the library's general operating funds. And in addition, I have already accounted <laughs> for their anticipated use in the library board's approved budget. I've already taken that into account. So when I started in 2014, our library books and other media uh, budget was $134,000. And I've been able to carefully reduce that down and utilize investment income to help supplement that. And then to keep in mind that at some point in time, there aren't really so many cars driving on the roads with CD players. Um, although our CD collection is actually more utilized than you would think. It also accounts that DVDs are shrinking, <laughs> um, but people still come in and utilize them because they can't pay for streaming service. So, in that case, you know, and, and, and that's very restricted. Uh, the investment income, the Jane Showman account um, is actually over the year is down $18,000. It's, um, we don't really drop below 300,000. Right now it's 306. At the beginning of the year it was like at 325. I hope if we look at the June statement, I hope the markets rebound this spring would be fantastic. And I make a recommendation to the board of how much we'll withdraw to utilize those funds. But right now, if, if it goes below 300, the recommendation is not to withdraw. And that's in keeping with, um, you know, the, what we have, what has been set up for the, the Jane Showman Endowment account. So the markets are sometimes fantastic and other times it, they're not. Um, the Friends of the Library, um, they have, as of their March 31st uh, financial report that I, my staff received last week, they had a pr just over $39,000. And I'm about to put forth an ask to them that is nearly $13,000 for summer reading alone. 
um, they would like to actually spend the money on furnishings. And they uh, informed us at the meet at their meeting last week that they received a $5,000 donation for furnishings for the children's department. But I need new flooring for the children's department before I'm going to buy furniture. So they're restricted and the friends don't want to pay for health insurance. I mean, they're very generous. They, they fund our museum passes, um, summer reading, uh, different types of programs. But I pull out of them already anywhere from twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars in a pre-pandemic year, and I've already I'm going to be I'll have tapped them by mid-May for sixteen thousand dollars. So I'm well on my way to already getting it, getting money from them. Um, they have not been able to have a book sale in over two years. So in a book sale, they're only making five to eight thousand um, dollars. Other book sales make a lot more money than the Weathershield Library book sale makes. Um, so it, as far as I'm concerned, they're actually down twenty thousand dollars in what they should have had. Um, the library we received. Uh, I kind of spoke about this earlier. We received twenty thousand dollars of ARPA money from the a state library grant. It's a wonderful gift, but again, that was extremely limited. I put in three grant applications of trying to help us move forward, um, and we did move forward in some ways, but um, I, I now will have two wonderful water fountains and a charging station and a lot of paper towels and some fantastic tables, but that's not going to cover operating exp expenses. And so, um, you know, that money's already been spent and accounted for. Um, I already spoke about the investment is, is down. Um, the library's revenue, our proposed revenue that I submitted to Mike O'Neill and Bonnie earlier in, I think it was January, early February, um, our revenue estimate is $5,000. And there is a movement underway to go fine free as public libraries. And this is a nationwide movement and Connecticut over half, that's 90 public libraries at this point have gone completely fine free. And in the surrounding areas, Rocky Hill is fine free and Newington is fine free. And that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on us. Now we're fortunate that I believe that uh, Laurel, the previous director had been leading almost like the country in some way where she did food for fines and that will be a discussion the library board will need to have and we do food for fines right now and we'll be doing that again in july um but surrounding towns are doing very different things um and that's the revenue that we contribute to the town but in the month of july we're waving we've been waving during the pandemic mostly we've just restarted uh in the past year with fines but it does not help that Rocky Hill and Newington have gone completely fine free. Um, currently, um, while everybody would like a crystal ball of what the dollar amount would be with about two and a half months left of the, of the fiscal year, the current fiscal year, um, it's still a little early, but as of today, and I know that Mike has it out somewhere in the book, um, in the in the binder um, as of today we are the library is 79 percent spent out next week it'll be 81 percent because it's about two percent for every um uh, most of the salaries every pay period and so next week is a pay week and that'll be we'll be at 81 percent. but that's on track so our spending is already directly on track um and then if i can make a plug for um capital projects and so that's on page pull it up on the screen that we can all look and I know you have this in front of it uh, but for those who are on that don't have the binder um, I did not see that we had anything under CNEF um, so I'll focus on capital improvement and while I am not project 16 I am project 46 and 47 as ranked um, at the bottom there, the library redesign project, um, we were looking for $100,000 uh, 
to be put for forward to that 1.7 million that we just uh, received. And then the library, the RFID replacement. Um, so a refresh of that is, is, a, is about $200,000. Um, and so that's the capital money. Um, obviously, this is not breathing apparatus like the fire department. We understand that. Um, but yeah, so that's that's where we are in those projects. There are other projects in CNEF, I believe, and in CIP that benefit the library. They are not, they are, however, under different departments, under Sally Katz, I believe. Um, and so we are proponents of those as well. Um, I'm, and I think um, Mike O'Neill or somebody is doing voice over IP. So um, I'm a big proponent of voice over IP. Um, and and that that's very important, the library generator, but I know that the police need a new generator as well. So, you know, those other projects we understand, um, anything related to HVAC and roofing, I'm a big fan of. Um, but that's what I have for the budget. And I'm just wondering if there's any questions that I did not already answer. Thank you, Brooke. Um, just going back real quick, uh, you first started off with the uh, $1.7 million grant for the bond uh, grant. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was one of the conversations, I think I was part of it, it might have been in the CIAC first uh, meeting on that. And I think I, I recommended going to bond council for that. So yes, yes. And thank you very much. And that this is great. Yes. So thank you. <laughs> yes, I council. do remember that. And yes. So that may have been the impetus for the bond commission. So just want to mention that um, you would. Yeah, you sat through the conversation with the um, fire department because we were running a little bit late. Um, I mean, you heard what they're going through as well. I mean, water alone is up twenty five thousand. Diesel just for that department up four thousand. You mentioned you know the um, CNEF air packs six hundred eighteen thermal imaging cameras sixty eight thousand. Those are just the, the two that you heard from just the previous one. You know there are priorities for each and every department. I mean I I guarantee if we had every department take a look at that CIAC ranking, they would want to be in the top 10 uh, as well. And it's, it's, as the deputy mayor said earlier, it's not that they're, you know, number one rank. I mean, there's a whole pool that we're in the top tier, second tier, third tier. Um, yeah, it's a question of, you know, where do we have the money for an additional four thousand dollars in their diesel uh, MDC charging us an additional twenty five thousand, and that's just in in the last department that you you guys sat through. Um, and I didn't catch all of that. I did come in late, and I I really can't speak to other departments. I really I can just speak to the library specifically. Yep, but it's across the board so far in the last four or five that we've heard from increases for the these increases for those. Um, and I know you and I have talked about it since you came on board. Staffing at the, the library, I mean, 16, well, take you out, there's 15 either associates or library uh, librarians or managers. Um, are any of them looking to retire anytime soon we are anticipating retirements and, and ex we're, there's going to be re at least one retirement this year for sure um, however we are looking to fill those positions so from all those positions that you see even past the 16 um, that's a total of 30 humans for a total of like 20.32 positions F or FTE equivalent uh, full-time equivalents um, so I have 30 humans 
And when I started, we had 50, over 50 humans. And so I have slowly brought that down. Our FTEs, when I started, it was 22.87, I believe. And now we're at 20.32. Um, I think I've pushed it about as far as I really can go um, and still maintain quality, you know, the quality service. Um, but I, I do anticipate retirements in the next couple of years. I do expect what, there is going to be one this year for sure. Um, but I am planning to fill that. Um, now, can I delay doing that a little bit? Um, but not as much as you might think. And the cost savings on some of these, because I have to fund anybody leaving, the people retiring are generally not insuring an entire family at that point in their life. They may be funding a, having a spouse, um, but not children. But when I'm adding, when, when a person were retiring, I have to insure them at full family. And so that's plus, you know, 14 to, 14 to 21 thousand dollars extra you know so there isn't necessarily the cost savings that you might see because it's on the health insurance on the the one they do they there is a cost savings because many of these people are rotating off the pension um and but then that that burden gets bore gets is is weighs down another another aspect in the budget with the town um, and less and less people try to hold up the arc of the pension. And I don't want to speak out of turn because Mike O'Neill will correct me, but um, you know, the, there's less people trying to hold up that, but the people are rotating onto the defined contribution, which is a savings. Um, so. Um, when have we all, how, I guess, what are our hours right now? for the library we have i believe it's 54 hours a week and over yeah. seven days a week uh and this past year um because our budget there re really wasn't a budget increase we had a budget decrease this current fiscal year um we actually did not do sundays in september but we started in october and uh, and we were planning to do october through may and i believe I have achieved enough savings in the current fiscal year to pull off Sundays in June. So we have scheduled Sundays for June. And I don't know, maybe the last Sunday of June, I have to pull the plug and go, we're closed and there's no more money. Um, but we do anticipate being able to pull that off. So I was able to achieve some cost savings through the year um, it, to do Sunday service through June. Um, and Ideally, I would have enough to start up in September, and if not, I'll be looking at October or November to start up Sunday, seven day a week service. And how, how long have we done seven days a week? For as long as I've been here, and I would say longer, and I'm looking at Martha. Martha, do you, it's been a long time. <laughs> Um, Sundays was something that was an in initiative of Laurel's. Um, so it's been probably, it has been since before Brooke came in and it was something we sought to include in our budget probably for a couple of years before we were able to, um, to achieve that. A very popular time for folks to come into the library. Okay. And if I utilize, I, I, it's unique. I, if I, I am able to use part-time non-union staff on Sundays. Um, if I need to utilize union staff, which often I do, I have to pay them time and a half. Um, and so, but I, I have a certain order that I go through that we're that we go through in order to get to that level. And so, we've been able to keep it down. Um, where a, a union member may only do one Sunday a month. Um, and some really want it, some don't, um, but it, it's costly if I'm utilizing the union, but I'm not required, but I would need to if I cannot find the part-timers. And that's why it's important to keep the part-time non-union uh, wages up a little bit because I am competing with other surrounding libraries as well as like Dunkin Donuts. I mean, it's so I have to be, <laughs> I have to be competitive enough that people want to have Sundays 
at the Weathersfield Library and work here as opposed to, you know, pick another location. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough, but so far we've, we've been, I, I think we've been fortunate to hang on to our part-time non-union um, and they, they've been working for us for so long. Okay. Do you know, um, as you talked about surrounding libraries, do our surrounding towns, are they open on uh, Sundays as well? Um, I, you know, I think everybody kind of shut down during the pandemic and some locations have opened a bit, a lot do the winter months. Um, and sometimes it does feel like we are the library that is open in, in, surround, in the surrounding area. Um, I believe Newington has to pay their staff um, double time. Um, and so they probably have less Sunday service than us. And I can't speak to Rocky Hill. I, I used to know it cold. I don't know it anymore because the pandemic has, has changed things, but there was significantly less Sunday service. Um, and we've been able to, to add it back on. Okay. And um, I'm just looking at some of the surrounding ones. Uh, what are our hours on Sunday? Um, it's one to five. The staff come in and report at 1230. So it's one to five. Okay. Anybody else with any questions for Brooke? Mayor, if I may. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Brooke, thank you for your presentation. Very comprehensive. I was in the library today. Uh, I was buzzing. I, got, I don't know if you can see it. This book, Grit, by Angela Duckworth. Uh, I thought it might help me get through the budget process. But in all seriousness, I wanted to ask you, Brooke, about you've had a significant cut to library books and other media. I think of was like, I'm not looking at it right now, like 134,000 a few years ago, down to 100. We all know that books are part of the lifeblood of the library. Um, was that just to, an attempt to save money? Did you change the way you ordered books? I mean, I want to get at some of the needs maybe that haven't been funded as much in the last few years. So we, we one of, uh, well, the investment, the Jane Showman Endowment, where the proceeds of the sale of the house, of her house, uh, went to the library. It was to be, util it's to be utilized only for the purchase of adult material. I cannot use it to purchase children's books. However, the book in what people are reading and how they're absorbing information has changed. So even though I have cut it from 134 to 100, it's been very deliberate. It has been progressive. Um, I, 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 we're kind of at the limit now, but I'm able, able to make up for any of it with adult material, specifically with the Jane Showman money. But Jane Showman money, I, the, the March 31st statement says I'm down $18,000 in them from what I had year to date. And so there's less to pull, recommend to the board to pull out to utilize. So in previous years, I've pulled out, say, 15000 or does that sound about right when I'm looking at Martha and Hannah? I'm like, yeah, 15,000. And we can use it on adult oriented electronic databases as well. Um, and so, but as far as um, we, we're, we're keeping track of trends that people utilize nonfiction information differently. People look up reference quickly on their phone. They don't necessarily want to read the whole biography of somebody. So we've been adjusting our spending accordingly. And so it's been a good experience for us because we're methodically been doing this with the, I've been methodically doing this with the staff over a, a period of years um, that we don't need to spend when I, like 9,000 on DVDs. We don't have the circ. they're not producing, they're not delivering, and people are streaming more, but we still are purchasing some DVDs, but we've adjusted our spending accordingly. Same with CDs, same with like what we would refer to as books on tape, but they're CDs on tape. 
you can't buy a new car. Well, you can't buy a new car. It's like, but if you were to get a new car, you can't get a DVD play. I mean, a CD player that anymore. So to recognize that magazines have magically shrunk themselves down um, themselves. I've made almost no cuts to magazines. They go out of print like you wouldn't believe. And I get refunds. So, you know, instead of when I started, it was in the $10,000 range. We're in the $6,000 range now. And, you know, and so we, we adjust um, that. So that's kind of what's been going on. So I don't feel that our collection has suffered and we have reduced the book budget by $34,000. And I have the Jane Showman to help with some of that, but, um, but that's not necessarily a guaranteed stream of income, but I don't feel our collection has suffered for it. Understood. <laughs> Helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, if, if you may, are you done, Ken? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Hey, so my comments are going to be a little different, and so I'll apologize up front. First, Brooke, thank you for your presentation. Um, as someone who has always been supportive of the library and someone who grew up in the West Hartford Library, similar to Martha Keneally, someone who probably, based on my reading at the West Harford Library, got into the same school Martha Keneally went to called Fairfield. Um, I have to be honest with you, this department to me has become so politicized that it is so disheartening when I see the posts that have been shared by the Democratic Town Chair stating the Republicans want to take money from the library. And I'll tell you why I find that offensive. No one has once asked me or a single Republican on this council, do you support the library? It's no different than the nonsense that went on with the closing of Willard Pool. There is not a single Republican on this council that supported them. And yet the pitch out there was, hey, let's make political theater out of this. Let's drum up support and make the Republicans look bad. And when you start to politicize a department that doesn't check whether you're a Republican or a Democrat when you come in to check out a book, what happens is it calls into question anything being asked. Because the first thing that came to my mind, are they asking this because they need it? Or are they asking this because they want to make political theater to challenge the Republicans to cut it so they can say the Republicans don't care about the library? And I find that incredibly offensive because my voting record in 20 years ago, I have always been supportive of the library. As a kid who grew up in the library, I find incredible value in it. And to be lumped in and said that I'm no longer support, the Republicans don't support it, to me is disingenuous and it has completely politicized this department. And so that's the stain that's out there. And I just don't understand why it even had to happen. So I can just say that I actually am not on Weathersfield social media. I believe we are among the most neutral departments. I've actually, 10 of my staff are Weathersfield residents and I've specifically had discussions with them um, they're concerned that, you know, that if patrons engage them and talk of they're, they're concerned, I have asked them to not, you know, not to, 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 they can't speak as municipal employees. That's my job to speak. Um, I am not on Weathersfield social media. Um, I pride myself on that. I am very, very neutral and that the department is very, very neutral. I try to purchase materials or have my staff purchase materials that is upsetting to everyone in the community that we are very, very balanced. Um, I think I am known nationally as one of the more conservative <laughs> um, library directors. Um, uh, and, and so I, I, I think that is shocking to some people. I believe, I mean, if you've seen me at Corn Fest um, and the politics and everybody's getting elected, people want to come over. Um, I have only known bipartisan support being part of Weathersfield since I've been here since 2014. I have had a 9-0 vote on my budget. Um, and, I, and, and so I can just speak to my experience and my staff's um, 
the library board is appointed by council um, and they are the ones who are supposed to advocate. I have to be careful in my role as a municipal employee and I used to work in a nonprofit and all I did was budget advocacy. Um, and so I'm sorry that it, 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 it that it's be, that your perception is that it's politicized. I, you know, and that's your perception and that's, um, I, I don't, I'm just, I just don't want to be cut. <laughs> that, that's, and that's my job is to advocate for the department. Um, and it, it was kind of like really um, shocking to me. <laughs> um, but, and, and, and I know Bonnie is a, and, and her family are heavy library users. Um, and so, you know, it, that's, that's what I can say about that. And, 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 and but I appreciate that. And I don't doubt that you're that way at all. And my comments aren't really being directed at you. My comments are in reference to, I saw this, and it's not a perception, it's a fact. All you got to do is go on Facebook and you can see the, the posts that are being sent from the Democratic Town Committee that, you know, the Republicans want to cut the budget. The Republicans want to do that. It's not true. It's disingenuous and it's not true. Nobody has asked me how I feel about this. So I'm not going to allow myself. Nobody's asked any other Republican how they feel about this. And so when you start to play that game, it starts to make everybody question everything. When in fact, you know, if you look at the town manager's proposed budget, it doesn't say the Republican proposed budget. It doesn't say the Democrat. It doesn't even say the council proposed budget. Our job is to listen to what you guys are advocating for and come together in a bipartisan fashion. And I'm just telling you, when I read stuff like that and I see stuff like that and I have people calling me saying, why do you want to cut something without any knowledge whatsoever of it? You know, that to me does not bode for bipartisanship. It says, oh, we're going to play games here with the budget at the library. And I'll go back to what I said in the beginning. I don't get asked if I'm a Republican, a Democrat, or an independent, or a libertarian, or anything when I go to check out a book. And so, to me, is I don't feel that's the way to run the library board. And I would say that our board did pass um, a unanimous bipartisan um, budget. Um, and, that I'll, and I'll end it there. Okay. And so, book. Then my other question is, and I'm sorry I had to say that, but it was something that was very personal and frustrating. Is because I have no problem saying no to something, but don't assume that because I have an R next to my name, it's going to be a no. And my question to you though is, in your report, in your budget breakdown, it looked like there were four managers for twelve employees, which means each manager if you do the math, and I don't know if it's fair math, has three employees each. Is that correct? No, there, I have three managers um, and, and I have an admin team of four, but three are managers. And then we have, like I have a manager for children's services and she oversees, I wanna say about five, five or six people. And I would say there's probably seven or eight in a different department. And then the other one is about like six positions. And so there's 30 humans um, and I'm one of them, but they're, they're managing more than just like a, a handful of people. But some of the people are just, are, we have more humans than it might see. We have 30 people total. Okay. If that may, yeah. So, but it, they're managing more than a couple of people for sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, if I could hop in. Sure. Um, on the, uh, there's been, a, there was some discussion about um, circulation and, and these types of, uh, the, the kind of like the use case you might say for the library. I get a lot of mine. I use like the Libby app, you know, and, and download a lot of stuff in, in that vein. And of course, I think there's a transition as you talked about from CDs, you know, older technology, newer technology. Um, can you, when I was looking at some of those numbers or you were explaining them, can you help me understand is, is that, was those numbers of use, is that what we might consider the old fashioned way, you know, the pulling out of the books is Ken just, you know, the grit book that he just talked about, or is that inclusive of the different modalities of use of the library. It include like a checkout when you download on Libby. That's yeah. the same as if you had checked it out 
a, a, a paper version or an audio book version, um, if that okay. makes sense. Yes. It does, and it's helpful because I didn't know the technique, the, the, the basis of the statistics you were giving us or the, the problem becomes, Matt, is that I don't necessarily own, sometimes I own, sometimes I don't own, um, in the capital sense, that Libby copy. Um, right. And that's, that's kind of frustrating because sometimes after 26 uses or 26 weeks or whatever it is, it goes back, Good evening. It, it, go, it, it goes back to um, Libby and I would have to repurchase it. And so there's a bunch of different models that go on that are very, very frustrating. And I never want to give too much money to any one of these um, Hoopla or Overdrive because it, it just kind of goes into, you know, users. And we do have, you know, hundreds of, of users of this stuff. But um, I have to keep in mind, I don't own that. Um, and so we're constantly working with the vendors and our consortiums to negotiate the best prices for this because if ebooks existed at, you know when public libraries came about and, <laughs> um, sure. we would not have public libraries like <laughs> they're all about not sharing you know so um when we look at the dollar amounts that you're asking for like I think there's a hundred thousand dollars of material and i think there's a couple other pieces is, is all of that electronic material sort of lumped into that ask or is that separated out in a different way? The tech support is, tech support is often the e-resources and the e-books, but some of the e-books does fall into um, that other line of $100,000 where library books and other media. So, that library books and other media is generally your more traditional and the tech support line is is generally the other sometimes there's some overlap but okay. as a if there's a way the library prefers it i'm sure you're dealing with multiple vendors the rest of it it might be useful just as a side note to let the patrons know or at least i didn't i don't know you know i use the libby it's an it's an easier uh, I, I'm familiar with it, but if yeah. you prefer, it's cheaper for the library for me to use an audiobook or an ebook or another another vendor. Um, that would be good. That would be good feedback for a patron. That's all. Yeah. Sort of thrown out there. Um, as it relates to um, line forty six forty seven, the the two one hundred thousand dollar requests on the CIP, is that have you done any analysis, or is there analysis that's done to determine whether or not that's an ARP has the possibility of an ARPA funding? grant over like we've seen in other departments this is very yeah different. so i believe rfid was the rfid replacement i believe was is technically eligible okay. for for that um but there was a lot of different eligibility requirements and um the model that the vendor is currently throwing at me is a lease and you may not want to do lease with arpa money um sure Okay, and the library redesign project, we think that would fall under it? Um, I, that I do not, I don't believe I submitted that as a project for ARPA. That's been on the CIP. I, 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 did, I submitted RFID um, <laughs> after hearing of the... Requirements? Yeah. So your, your thought is that the redesign project, like, I guess it's... I think it's a, is a part of a match to the 1.7. It would be getting us up to the 1.989. Yep. And you don't think that that probably would maybe meet the requirements of ARPA. Is that your... I'd, I'd have to revisit it, but the project I submitted for ARPA was RFID. I okay. think we, we treated that uh, library redesign project as ARPA money. Oh, you did? Okay. It's on here, not item 46 for a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I don't know. That's on the CIP. Yeah, uh, but not the ARPA. I guess it's okay. And Bonnie, correct me if I'm wrong. The CIP items were on uh, uh, available for ARPA funds. Isn't that correct? Yes, as you know, as long as they're one-time expenses, yeah. 
if um, if if clarification is needed, if you could just let me know whether those two items might fall under that, that would be great. We don't need to debate it, or figure it out today. Thank you. Mary. <clears throat> yep. You might. Yep. Thanks. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, Brooke. I just wanted to ask uh, about your daily capacity. I believe that you prior said before COVID, your numbers are about maybe 500 a day or so. About 400. Um, like, uh, I just want to know, do you see a lot of overlay about them, like out of town uh, residents that maybe don't have the same access in their town that come in and, and want to get used or try to have memberships or, or whatnot. Um, like, I just want to see like how we're regionalized and how we're supporting other regions with what we're doing in our ops. So we, um, we receive, uh, well, I would say we look at this with the library use. So it's not counting the people, they'd have to utilize their card for us to really track that because as Dan was saying, we don't ask very much about patrons who come in. <laughs> um, we all like an on anonymity or confidentiality, right? So like, <laughs> we don't ask that question. We are able to tell it with card use. So that would be when they hit the computers, the Wi-Fi, or the checking out a book. And so um, I would say, in any given year, at least 20% of our users are non Weathersfield residents. That would include myself. Um, and we, we do uh, get money if I use my Milford card here and check materials out here. Um, and that's seen as a net gain and a benefit. But you have to remember, we have a great parking lot. We're on bus lines. Um, and uh, we are open generally seven days a week into the late until nine o'clock at night. Um, and so that we are able, um, you, where people do come in and utilize us. And a lot of people are employed in the town and come and use us because they work here. And so they are part of the Weathersfield community just in a different way where they may not be an actual resident, but they have to use, like I have to use my Milford car um, here if I'm gonna check out something from here. Um, I don't get a Weathersfield card. Um, and so I would say about 20%, that has shrunk because of the pandemic where people just aren't going out. Yeah. And then my family uses a lot of the programs there, especially my boys. Um, what, do you do you have like a, a count on like the average amount of programs that you have available for families that you do throughout the year? I can get. I know that. that's kind of probably hard. To I can get that easily. Yeah, we, we, I think the last fiscal year that we reported twenty twenty one. I think I, the slide said one hundred and seventy. It was just under one hundred and eighty. Okay. I, I might have it to yeah one hundred and eighty. Yeah. And I'll, I can get you that exact fisc fiscal year. Um, we have just op reopened up in-person programming for uh, starting in January. Um, we're still doing virtual. We're cutting back a little bit on the take and makes um, or the self-directed kind of activities. Um, but we're trying to have more and more robust, robust programming. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. And I just want to um, finish off by saying, not to create a back and forth, but to my my best friend over there, Dan, um, I'm sorry you feel that way, honestly. Um, from my understanding, I believe the message is more so to get residents to step up and step out in their support for your budget. Um, I'm sorry if there was any attacks toward you or your team, but I don't think that was the initiative or the goal. And you know, I'm gonna speak to you honest. So if you want to rough up in the backyard, I'm right here, buddy. <laughs> Are we allowed to talk, the board members? Sure. Up to the mayor and Bonnie. <laughs> I just wanted to say, I've been on the library board. This is my second time around. Um, and Brooke is a real asset to this town. I'm one of the Republican appointees to the committee. And the amount of time and energy she spends on the budget um, has given to me that I never, ever want to be a librarian. Um, she, she is absolutely nickel and dime 
down to the penny. She knows how many paper towels we have saved. Um, she is the most fiscally responsible person I have ever met in my life. And when it comes to saving money for the library, she really bends over backwards. So it's one of the things that is a benefit. I, all other politics aside, the budget that this, this individual creates for our library and the way she manages it to maximize every penny that she spends should be rewarded. I've been in conversations with her, with her where other people have suggested, don't you want to pat it in case they cut it? And she says, no, um, I've never been on any other committee like that, but she will not pad the budget. So there is room to cut it out. So if we do slash the budget that's requested, that we have requested, and that a bipartisan group has voted on and approved, it will directly impact services and it'll really, it'll come out of our skin. And Lori, I totally agree. Um, you know, Brooke and I have had conversations off uh, line about what she's done for the library. You know, I've commended her so much so that not the last town man, not the current town manager, not the last town manager, but the town manager before that scolded me publicly for the comment, comments that I made uh, supporting the library um, at one of our budget meetings. So um, it goes without saying, I, I do agree with you. And uh, I know what uh, hard work not only Brooke has done, but the library boards of today and yesterday have done as well. So it's not a lost point on me. And I don't think on anybody on this uh, Zoom tonight. Any other questions? As you can see, not only Brooke, but the board, you know, we've got our work cut out for us. You sat through the entire hearing last night. You know what we are faced with. We have a book of, I don't even know how many pages of how many departments, of how many requests. And it's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole or squeeze a balloon and try not to take too much from one end of it and fill up another end of it. You know, money has to flow and we got to figure out amongst the nine of us, you know, how are we going to prioritize these requests? Because, you know, just like I started off my conversation with you guys, you know, it, if we don't take from one or we don't add to another, somebody's going to, you know, have their feathers ruffled and uh, everybody has a priority in this town and we're, we're faced with having to to measure those priorities against each other. And it's a very difficult task. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to present and thank you for allowing our board to attend as well. Mayor, could you just, um, <clears throat> I guess Dan's got me going now. I just need to say something and, I, and uh, I'm going back into retirement, but um, no one tells me what to do with my proposed budget. So if there's stuff going on social media, and I don't read it either, that is saying that the Republicans have made these decisions. Two weeks ago, the mayor emails me, now I get it, and says, who told you to close Willard Pool? No one told me to close Willard Pool. Nobody told me to cut $100,000 out of a library. This is an extremely hard budget. And so if you guys are playing, I'm not just saying you, but if anybody is playing games with either party, the person to blame is me. It's my budget. And if anybody knows Bonnie well, you do not tell her what to do. As a town manager, we do not get in the middle of it. And I just have to say this, because I am appalled as much as Dan that another party is being blamed for something that's my decision. So thank you, Mayor. I'm just so upset. There's no need for these games to be played in a manager form of government. Oh. All right, I'm done. I'm off my stool. Are you counting down the days? I mean, I, I got to add a couple, but... Uh... 
I appreciate that, Bonnie. Okay, without any other questions, I think we're gonna move over to IT if I'm not mistaken. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We got Jim, John, and our finance director slash IT person, Mike O'Neill. I'm gonna let Mayor, I'll let, uh, we've got John Eichner, Jim DeRagan, and Derek Sola. I'll let Derek Sola uh, kick it off and take you through when the other I'm guy. sorry, I didn't see Derek. He might be on another screen. Oh, there you are. Yep. Command center. Yep. Go ahead, guys. Boy. I feel like the band they had to perform after the Rolling Stones after that. <laughs> um, so our overall budget, budget is pretty similar to last year. There's a few differences. Um, so I'm just going to go over those highlighted um, differences. So travel, training, and dues, um, that increased. Um, so with that, we're just like any organization, we, we want to try to re retain our employees. So we want to invest in them. So we want them to, to attend conferences, um, go to different training. So they have the skills and the confidence to, you know, help all our users. Um, and training overall, we have to stay up to date because everything in IT is always constantly training. So that's why there's a slight increase because um, all the vendors, all their packages seem to be increasing over the years. Um, so any questions about travel training and dues? You know, and again, I just want to expand upon that a little bit. Uh, with, with a cybersecurity lens now, ransomware attacks, um, you know, our team must be well-trained in this direction also uh, to make sure that we can mitigate any attacks that come our way. It's, it, it, is, it, it is the new uh, foundation now that we must build, build upon here. It, uh, net, network security is, is paramount now. So uh, some of that training is cybersecurity training also. All right, um, one of the next items that went up was support services. So the big ticket with this one was we implemented a um, help desk ticket system. So with this, it's a cloud-based system. It's gonna help us track um, requests for service. So we can track things like break fix, new computer requests, um, training, setting up of um, meetings, whatever the users need. Before we were flooded with emails and things got missed, not by, you know, on purpose, but it was just a flood of emails every time somebody needed something. This keeps a nice organized method where we can triage, we can track trends. The users can actually go check their own tickets. They don't have to constantly contact us. They can see that we're waiting for parts. We're waiting for purchase orders. Um, and we can track trends. So we can find devices that are defective or products that are not working properly. And we know for the future, we may not buy a certain laptop because we had a flood of tickets because you know this laptop had issues. Um, and that's a new service. So we, we got a good deal because we're only using it for a few months before the budget season. Yeah. And a full season is gonna be 4,000. So that's why there was an increase in support services. Um, there were some minor increases in internet services and most of these are just contractual maintenance agreements with vendors. So their costs go up um, and it's reflected in our renewals. And then one item that actually went down was our IT equipment and software uh, because two items, desktops and Windows 10 upgrades were moved to CNEF. So those are the major highlighted items that kind of have a difference if anybody had questions on those. I'd like to uh, just uh, jump back to personnel. If everyone, um, and I'm looking at page 12 at the top where the salaries are and just to explain uh, the staffing here, uh, there was an upgrade um, and approved upgrade in our tech one position to a, an information specialist too. The tech one position was the one that we, we created um, after Paul Dudley retired seven years ago. 
um, that was funded at $43,000. We had a tough time keeping that filled, finding people and keeping people. We've had three people in that position. Anyways, that was, um, there was a discussion a couple months ago and it was agreed upon to upgrade that to a tech two position. We filled uh, that position and another tech two position um, that was vacant. If you'll recall, um, besides Jim, who's with the Board of Ed, but helps us quite a bit on the town side um, of the positions, you know, Derek was the only person back uh, last year for, for quite a while. And that included the loss of the officer at the police department who was covering IT. Um, so we're back to full strength, um, which is, has made a world of difference. We appreciate the support for the upgrade of that position. Um, there is one additional request, which would be a reclass of Derek from a tech two to a tech three. Uh, Derek is, is leading the staff and uh, he deserves that. Um, Bonnie has prioritized that at the top of her list on page five. Uh, the, the cost of that reclass presently is, is about $1,700. Um, but that gets that gets Derek up into a different grade um, at the at the first step. So it gives him uh, not only an increase in grade, but uh, the opportunity to get steps um, in the coming years. And that that comprises the bulk that in benefits, you know, which are just the 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 fifteen percent on on uh, medical mainly are really the 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 bulk of the increase. If you look at the bottom, you know, on page thirteen. Personnel went up by sixteen uh, percent because of the the two things I just mentioned. Non personnel costs actually went down. Are you guys comfortable with three people in that department? And I guess where does Felix and those that are helping out with some of the IT work where do they fall under? Or is, I, or is Felix the number three position? Derek would probably tell you he could use another 10 people, right, Derek? Oh, yeah. The, the more, the better. Uh, Felix is the number one position. And our newest employee, Theo, is number three. OK. I mean, these guys are straight out, and I do mean straight out. And for the longest time, even before I got here, Derek was the only one there. But um, I mean, I'm sure right. you can imagine all the IT needs that are going on, and and we're not even uh, we we don't even have as much IT stuff as other towns do. So yeah, and it and it's only going to increase over time. So oh yeah. You know, one thing I want to mention, which is not in the budget, but I, I actually I had a call back finally from a company, um, Derek and Felix, and I've taken it over since I got here. We are bombarded with FOI requests, and it was taking Derek and Felix hours upon hours upon hours. So finally, I said, we're taking it into the manager's office and it's taking us hours. So I am researching software because there are companies that will actually do this for you. Um, but, it, you know, it just, I don't see it stopping for a while because of a lot of these lawsuits. So I think we need, we're going to need to get a grip on that because you certainly don't want your new manager spending so much time on FOIs. Um, so I'll be hopefully reporting back to you with some costs of that too. So I just wanted to mention that. I have a question for Mike, if I can. Um, Mike, how, how much of your your day or your time do you get involved with the IT? Uh, um, less and less, Tom. You know, I I am kind of a, I, I've been a conduit to management to the manager um, over the years since we made the change, um, an asset to the team in terms of. Uh, funding and budgeting and, and figuring out, you know, helping, assisting with decisions on, on how to pay for things, just assisting with decisions on what, you know, what to buy, pricing, that sort of thing. Less and less is, is to answer your question, Tom, because of the, we're 
you know, our staffing is back up. You know, two two years ago, going into the pandemic, it was, I think it was just, well, we had the we had the the lower position filled for a little while into the summer. Trisha was here, but it was just in town hall. You know, it was Derek and I, and Gary that were you know figuring out how to do meetings you know, remote and get to get people remote and, and, you know, board of ed helped us, Jim and, and, and the staff over at the board of ed were helping us too. Um, but my, my time has, has decreased as you would expect, you know, I, I, uh, um, I kind of stick to, you know, just, I was doing a little more hands-on type stuff a couple of years ago, but now it's more just, you know, managerial support, if you will. Do you envision a, a manager position eventually for this department yeah that's how that's how it's you know and it's been you know Jim and, and Derek are have always truly managed it you know from a technical standpoint um and again I think they're either of those guys you know and you, you've seen them you know them both and you've seen them in in meetings from time to time so they can they can do um what I've been doing I'm just trying to make sure that you know, there's not too much on your plate. You have, you have your own thing to be taking yeah, care of. Yeah, I mean, of. we'll talk about, I can, I, you know, we'll talk about finance Thursday night. Um, but uh, I, it's the IT, you know, if you, again, if you asked me this question a year and a half ago, I'd give you a different answer, but it's, we're, we're in good shape. You know, we've come a long way, boy, and, and credit to, to the staff. I mean, we have come a long way. We most certainly have, yes. Thanks. Um, so John's here to, to just give everyone an update on the phone system and where we are. Um, and then, so John, if you want to do that, and then I'll just have, let Derek take you to page 80, um, to talk about, uh, the, the few CNEF items that are, that are on that list. I just want to remind folks, we do have Sally from physical services up next and then Bonnie. I think we allotted and Claudia, Claudia too. And Claudia. So um, yeah, just be mindful of time when we go through these. Uh, I don't want to shortchange anybody. Um, but uh, we do, we got a still an, a, a full, at least another hour to go. Yeah, the, uh, the CNEF is just um, the desktops, Windows 10 upgrades that was removed from the operating budget. And that's just really self-explanatory. It's just a constant refresh of computers um, every single year, purpose-built machines. So there's some licensing that we purchase, but uh, it's pretty cut and dry, just desktop replacements. As far as the VoIP system is concerned, uh, about four weeks ago, we received responses to the RFP we put out. We got 10 responses in. We've been meeting once or twice once or twice a week over the last four weeks to review those and we think we've pretty much narrowed it down to five finalists we're going to ask those five finalists to come in and make about a one hour presentation of their system um, basically to answer some uncertain points that we had question marks on the proposals um, and in large part to find out from them, which we didn't ask in the RFP proper, what their supply chain delays might be. When we, you know, if we make an award within the next 30 days, let's say, when can they get this thing done? Um, one thing I can tell you was, uh, you, you know, I was before you talking about a radio system upgrade, the Harris folks are telling me that. The Cisco components that they would require, he said, if you gave me a, a purchase order tomorrow, you won't see a, a radio system upgrade to, for eight to 14 months because Cisco alone has an eight month delay in their fulfillment process. So I'm guessing we might see some of that. I hope it's not as bad as eight months uh, when, we, when we ask that question of the VoIP providers, but We'll be bringing them in in the next week uh, for the final reviews and hopefully um, make a selection right after that. John, would they be, 
all coming in right around 350,000 for the void? They vary. Some of them are, are lower than that. Uh, some of them, I can't remember if any are higher than that, but um, no, I don't think anybody's higher than that, but th that's part of the questions. Hey, how can you do this at this price when one of the other proponents are saying, you know, twice the amount that, you know, that that's among the confusion um, that we want to get clarified to make mm -hmm. sure that the lower offer is giving us what we want, quite frankly. And then we, a question for Mike, do, did we put any money aside over the years for the VoIP? Is there a reserve for that at all? Yes. Yeah, we put, uh, you, uh, the council uh, transferred $105,000 uh, of, of leftover money from last year's budget. So that, yep. goes, that goes against the, you know, the 350 that you see there. Okay. So uh, we got to start on that. Good. Okay. I personally would like the VoIP off of this list. It's been on the entire time I've been on council, if I'm not mistaken. Well, let me tell you, when, when Rayanne hired me 10 years ago, plus, I had three projects, a fiber backbone, radio system upgrade, and VoIP. I expect it to be done in no more than five years, so <laughs> I'd like it to be done, too. Yeah, and just a quick background on that. We spent the past five years rebuilding the network on the town side to an enterprise class uh, net network uh, for built-in security, cybersecurity, wireless internet, um, all of it. So, it, you know, we have been building up and we could not, our network in the past could not support a VoIP system. I mean, it, we were purpose building our net, net, networks here in the past many years uh, for this end goal of VoIP. Yeah. So it's taken time. Okay. Any questions for John, Jim, Derek, or Mike? Seems pretty cut and dry. Um, all right, physical services is page 52. Sally, you are up. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Good evening. Um, actually, if you change to page 54, um, I'd like to start there. If you look sorry. at the very, sorry. No, I just said sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, if you look at the proposed budget for this year on page 54, you'll see that our non personnel um, requested costs have gone up by 2%. For this budget, that's a uh, that change is approximately around one hundred twenty-five thousand um, dollars. The drivers to what made um, the increases in the budget in the non-personnel items are things like the new MSW recycling, the new contract went uh, is is more costly. The one uh, and a half percent yearly increase for panes, which we are under a contract with them. Our unleaded fuel runs on a calendar, a, a regular calendar year. So half the year we have an actual fixed cost and half the year we have to put in an estimate. Um, and, and Mike O'Neill works with, with the estimate based on previous years. Um, our diesel fuel went up $20,000 this year. Uh, and again, that was competitively bid through Krog. Larvicide um, was up and salt was up. Our utilities, um, natural gas pricing is up. Some of the offsets to those increases, uh, some of the decreases, elect some of the, our electricity costs are down uh, due to the new contract and changing to LED light fixtures in many of the larger, in the larger buildings. And we're continuing to try to do LED fixture changeouts. We completed the library and we're working on PD, um, bringing down costs for contractors. We've already, uh, working with Bonnie, the proposed cut is for um, removing the summer help in the schools, which is going to be 
um, attest to the custodians. Um, we've taken away assistance with the LEAF program um, and also delaying a mechanic. Um, and so, and originally when we put it, put this in, one of the decreases was the pool. So knowing that our increases to the non-personnel are really the majority of these things are contracts or supply items such as, you know, salt and things. We tried to do some offsets, but we are still, uh, we are still slightly up at, at, uh, at a 2% increase. Um, trying not to bog people down with the, the line by line. That's kind of the, the global picture. They, of, they already know that, Sally. Yeah. <laughs> I told okay. them up front. Okay. Um, as far as the, if you look at the, um, CNEF and ARPA lists. Um, our CNEF requests actually are a little different than what you see on the chart. Um, you see uh, 4350, it says number one and number two, both at $172,000. That's incorrect. Um, the $172,000 is a com combination of the two vehicles. It's not each one being that amount. Um, and those, again, um, most of these are on the replacement schedules. The Jeeps with plows, we have two Jeeps that um, we have rebuilt on a number of occasions. Those Jeeps are used to, uh, throughout town in the smaller areas and also in sidewalks. It, the Jeep also is one of the trucks, well, it used to, um, to take the trailer to, to do trash removal. You see three dump trucks with plows. We're, we did not come just this year and ask for three trucks. That actually shows the last three years that we had requested a dump truck, but that it hadn't been purchased. Um, so our initial request was for one. The Ventrac mower um, is a multiple use device. Um, mostly it is a safer device for us to be able to use uh, as a mower when the Putnam, pro the Putnam um, exit project, Putnam bridge project, excuse me, it will be completed. And also uh, the installation of new sidewalks will be, be able to be used there. The zero turn mowers and the transit van. Again, the transit van is for the board, um, the, tradespeople who work for in the schools. When we took over the schools, we also took their vans. Their vans had um, are basically rotting out. And so we wanted to try to get onto a replacement schedule for the trades vans um, for that. There's also on the CRP, uh, excuse me, CNEF list, ARPA requested to town council for refuse cans at multiple locations. Um, there has been a request over the past couple of years from especially the business owners to add trash cans onto Main Street. And those um, $10,000 seems a lot. It is, they are expensive to buy. They are heavy metal cans and to ship them from where they um, are purchased is exceptionally expensive. Um, on the CIP ARPA list, um, and thankfully, and I do appreciate the fact that the council has already um, approved the replacement of the Charles Wright portable roof. We are going to be completing that project this summer, the renovation of that of the portables, um, the roof maintenance, um, high crest school. Obviously, these are all things that you've heard of before. Um, I don't wanna go line by line through them. You, you're all well versed in those. Um, at this point, I don't know if you wanna go for questions or if you want me to move on, Bonnie, to the other parts. Probably questions Okay. right now. Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, 
I have a question. So we we hear a lot about vehicles that we have that are, are rusting out and, and rust is taking over them. Like, do we not have a preventative maintenance program? Like, what are we, are we not like maintaining these vehicles and just allowing them to just sit in and, you know, it's just like, that's always the, the conversations that we need to replace them because they're rusted out. Well, part of it is that whenever our trucks are out, especially during winter operations, our trucks are out, we use straight salt. We do not use any other type of an organic de-icing material. So our trucks are on the road for hours at a time. They are um, getting inundated from the bottom up from salt. Once the trucks, once the, the workers come in from um, at the end of a storm, our trucks are washed and cleaned. We have basically a wash bay. It is not a um, commercial washing, truck washing system. It's the best that we were able to put together down at physical services, but we are able to get in and, and wash the trucks. It's just that over time, the, the salt really does wear away at the trucks. Um, the trucks are also used um, in non-winter months. They're hauling materials. They're going up, you know, into the, um, um, I'm blanking on the word. It's not, not to transportation, our stockpile, which has, um, you know, dirt roads and rutted roads. And so they are being used in that fashion. And so they do um, go through, you know, mud and dirt and stones and salt. Um, but we do have a prevent, I mean, they do come in, they are regularly washed, they are regularly greased, they are regularly maintained as you, um, probably better than our guys do their regular vehicles. It's just that over time, the corrosiveness is, of salt is extreme. And when the salt mixes with the water from snow and starts shooting up into the truck and it's out there for 17 hours, 18 hours, compile that over time, it, 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 it rusts. Thank you. I just wanted to, you know, just touch on the preventive maintenance aspect. I appreciate you for pro providing that information. <clears throat> Sally, I got a question for you with um, right now our overtime is over by about 37 percent. Mm -hmm. We had budgeted 273,000 we're at 375. Mm -hmm. What's the uh, what's the driver of that additional hundred thousand dollars plus? A lot of it was weekend and holiday storms. <laughs> If you look back on it, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Bonnie, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just going to laugh. I said, they prayed and they won this year. Every damn time the weather came in, I went, oh, here goes the weekend. Yep. yep. It no, came in came, Saturday, Saturday is time and a half. Sunday is double time. Yeah. It snowed Christmas weekend. Um, we had icing conditions, I, you know, New Year's around New Year's. It's just, we really lost this one when it came to, it was great for the schools. They had school um, because it didn't snow during the week, except for a couple of times, but the weekends were really rough on us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also had a lot of overnight ice glazing incidents where we were called in by the by PD that it, uh, the slippery condition started earlier. And so we had to bring people in and start salting, especially the main intersections. And then another one is roadway maintenance supplies. We budgeted 143, we're at 200,000 now. Roadway maintenance supplies are, is a lot of that is, goes to Tilcon for material for potholes and also for repairing and replacing basins. A lot of our catch basins are shot Today, I was just talking to Rich Bailey, um, the street sweeper, one of them, you know, he went over and it cracked. I mean, they're there. So that's where we're, um, we're over on that. Okay. Potholes this year are gonna kill us. The roads have just opened up. Yeah, somebody spoke about it last night and mm -hmm. um, 
it's no secret to anybody on this call who drives around town. We try our best with Derek in the software to pinpoint the needs, but you know things definitely do um, deteriorate a lot quicker. I think you know it's just years of neglect. Like I heard one somebody 20, 30 years ago neglected to he just didn't invest in roads and it's starting to creep up on us over the last couple of years. Mike. Tom. Uh, Sally, on uh, page 54, what uh, other structures and improvements? There's a placeholder for uh, negative 59,000. That was the Willard. That was closing the Willard pool. Okay, thank you. Ryan, I saw your hand up if you're still on. We'll get back to Ryan. Anybody else with any questions? Sally, you wanna go over your JAQs real quick? Yes, very quickly. I have two requests for JAQs. Um, these are really for two people who have gone for years above and beyond what their job descriptions have them do. One of them is David Auerhan, who was originally hired as a maintainer three HVAC person, uh, HVAC and plumber. David is our senior person. Uh, he knows the incredible labyrinth of mechanical systems in all of our town buildings. And a few years ago, when physical services took over the operations of the Millwoods and Willard pools, um, David took on that role of um, becoming the nights, weekends, aquatic pool supervisor. He um, went to school, got an additional um, certifications and licensing in, in pool and, and spa operations. He currently now supervises two seasonal pool workers um, in addition to when we need him during the summer uh, doing his HVAC work. Um, he is, this position has really given him uh, or really has expanded well beyond what he was originally hired to do. And now that we've added on the supervision part, the pool part, um, he is just, he's constantly available and responding and is responsible also for all of the sourcing of the pool materials. He also is um, working on the long range planning for how to support you know, all of the pumps and all the piping and everything else that goes into the pool operations. We were just talking this morning also you know, of, of painting the pools and grinding them and everything else. And it is really, um, he's well, it, for years we have added responsibilities onto his position and he's done it and he's, and he's done it exceptionally well. Um, and it is a position that when, when he leaves, we're going to need someone with pool expertise, and it is more than just an HVAC person. Um, and that um, is an approximately $1,686 increase um, for, that, for that position. <laughs> the second position is the one that, uh, and name you may know, Rich Wiley, um, from mechanic to senior mechanic. Uh, we run lean and mean with, the, with our mechanics. Um, as, our, as our fleet ages and as our schools age um, and our equipment ages, it is harder and harder to find um, parts and to source materials. Rich has taken upon himself to become the person who works to source all of the materials um, for our fleet. 
Um, he's also, you know, he's found things on eBay, find, finds things that are no longer available. Okay. He has transformed the operation of the fleet to streamlining it, bringing in technology, you know, trying different things, developing a maintenance schedule so that we can track our, um, our scheduled uh, maintenance uh, better. He, we've brought in a lot of new mechanics over the years and we our mechanics fix everything from a weed whacker to a dump truck and so rich has really taken it upon himself to mentor and to train the new mechanics um me the, being a mechanic has changed a lot over the years um, it's very highly technical it's highly computerized now um, and rich also is um Rich is also uh, the welder. So he has really become a leader in his position. That position also has about a $1,600 increase. So those are the two JAQs that I really feel are worthwhile. So, <clears throat> just so that if we're looking at page five, uh, maintainer three to senior maintainer three, that would be HVAC slash uh, CPO. That would be the maintainer three. Yes, that is the um, that that is the uh, pool technician in HVAC position. Yes. And then the second one, mechanic to senior mechanic, is self-explanatory. Correct. Okay, and then going down <laughs> to new positions. Um, we feel that we are always in need of um, additional staff, uh, especially on the ground staff. Um, as you all know, when we took over, uh, when we acquired Keisha Farms, um, we maintain that property. I know that it's not being used right now, but we're still maintaining it. We maintain all of our open space. We're maintaining all of our fields in town. And I know that Pat Kathy will be speaking to this, are being used. People wanna use them more. Um, we've spoken at length with the park board who and Little League who have more and more requests coming in for the way that our fields um, should be should be maintained as our fields are aging again and I and I know that I sound redundant, but our fields are aging and they don't have a lot of um, irrigation and other things to help prolong their lives. The staff have to spend more time to try to be the caretakers of them. And so, um, you know, the schools are also being used more and more and we take care of the, um, the grounds and the maintenance of all the buildings. And so an extra, um, or not even an extra, but an additional person is definitely needed. There is a lot of it places in town that needs to be mowed, maintained. We also maintain the playgrounds. And again, additional staff member um, will make a dent in, in that amount of work. Okay. I'm trying to you know, consolidate for time, sorry. No, it's a lot. And we haven't really dove and dived into the budget or the actual line items yet. There was, a, um, let me just go through. And I also want to just, just quickly say that um, maintaining our schools is also becoming um, more and more intensified. Um, the schools, as you all know, as you toured them, you saw them, it takes a lot to maintain them and to try to make them look the best that they can. For, I'm trying to look back, for Board of Ed Electricity, every, for all the other ones, they're staying the same. And I may have missed it. I had to sneak out and grab dinner real quick. I apologize if it's been said already. Electricity for all the other buildings, or for the town buildings, are staying the same, but the schools are going up eighty thousand. Yeah. 
we have not yet been able to um, do changes in the schools to LED lights and other things. That's one of the long range plans or short range plans that I'd like to do is work with Eversource um, or an energy company to be able to come in and work with changing our lights to LED lights. Um, that's also gonna take input from the board of ed and the teachers. Um, as far as the actual rates, I see Mike is also on here and he could talk a little to utilities and how those numbers come about. So you know. we, in, in finance was part of the budget development. Um, we asked all the departments to sort of, to, to budget utilities, but we also look at them. Um, we track month by month, the actual bills and, you know, we used to try to, we thought we could, could estimate, you know, what the, what the rate increases would be and things like that. But it's really more an exercise of, of because of, because there's differences in usage, like Sally's describing with the more efficient uh, lighting and things like that. We're really just comparing this year that we're in month by month to what we've budgeted in each account in each department and just making, making changes, some increases, some decreases to kind of, and then, you know, a pretty modest provision for, you know, what we would expect a, a rate increase to be. Um, but that's, that's really what it has become. And we've, we've been doing this for about three years now where we sort of, you know, after we asked the departments to take their cut at, at utilities, um, we look at everything kind of on one piece of paper and try to track actual and, and do that. So, you know, that's, that's part of what you're seeing there too, is just, just sort of testing our, our, what we budgeted in the current year, you know, against what we're actually seeing and, and making adjustments, adjustments for the next year's budget. Okay. Yeah, because I'm looking back at 1920, 271,000, went up to like 295 a year or two ago, two years ago to 320, now up to 400. It's nearly doubled in four, three, four years. Um, would we, do you, I mean, do you might anticipate hitting 400,000 for electric, uh, electricity at the schools or? You look at that, are you looking at gas, Mayor? What is this? You're on gas. You're on I mean, the answer, the answer is yes. We've, we've oh, well, like I sorry. said, for all the utilities, we've looked at every line in every department compared it to what how we're running currently and adjusted accordingly. So that's the number we put there is a number we think is sufficient. Yeah. Okay, I do apologize. It's always difficult to look because you got to go to the lower number, or lower line. Same, same answer though for all of them, Mayor, would be, you know, whether whether we're talking about gas or, or electric, we're, we're doing the same thing, water as well. Got it. Anybody else with any questions for Sally? Thank you for your time. Thank All you. Right. You watch how fast I can do town council. <laughs> All right, Claudia, you're up. I'm going to let Claudia and uh, Charles go so that they can go back um, to bed. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. Um, so town managers on page eight, Claudia. Yep. Thank you, uh, Bonnie. Thank you, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Councilors. Uh, I'm going to start out on page five with uh, my new position request. Uh, Human Resources Secretary 1. You will see it is number one on the priority list. Um, I realize my predecessor actually also, also requested uh, another 1.0 in the uh, HR department, but 
it was not funded. Um, I've tried to give you as much detail in my memo as I can of March 18th. Uh, there are some uh, analytics as far as what should the staffing look in the HR department for uh, an employee base of 200. And basically we'd be looking at 2.8. So I um, certainly would be happy with the 2.0. Um, so let me just give you a high level of uh, what's happened over my first year with the town, that is. Um, it's been quite, uh, quite a ride, quite significant. Um, I have supported two police chiefs, two town managers. I'm not sure that happens very often. I've um, worked with others to migrate the employee health benefits from Anthem to Cigna, which took place effective July 1st. I successfully, with our labor attorney, negotiated six out of the seven union contracts and physical services now is now back at the negotiating table. Um, there were four arbitration hearings. Um, there was a mandate by the state of Connecticut that all employees had to complete two hours of sexual harassment training that was successfully completed. Um, I did conduct a harassment complaint investigation along with labor attorney as well, and managed uh, a 20% turnover rate um, in the town this year, which was a lot, it was significant. Typically an average turnover rate should be below 10%. Um, so that's also a very expensive, situation for the town, turnovers is costly. And also the loss of institutional knowledge is a hardship for the town. And lastly, I'm gonna throw in COVID because HR had to manage COVID and that uh, I had experience doing that. It, it just took a lot of time. So uh, I'm gonna move on unless anybody has any questions regarding the new position that I'm requesting. Now that new position would that be Valerie from part-time to a full-time position? Yes, it would. It's, it's, since it's not a unionized position, it is a confidential position. She is doing an excellent job. And I, I do appreciate the extra funding the council has provided to extend her hours twice over the course of this year. Um, it's, it's been a huge help. She's, uh, she's doing a great job. Okay. Now, apparently this new position is not in the budget, so it would have to be added to the budget. Okay, any other, any questions for Claudia with the HR aspect of town manager's office? Okay, so let's move to page eight. I probably have the least number of line items of all departments, but um, they are special for me. Uh, the first one is tuition reimbursement, um, 51214. Typically in the past, it's been budgeted at 14,000. It's been reduced to 8,500. Um, past, past practice has been, not practice, but past experience, let me say, has been, it, typically it's been mostly police officers that are getting, uh, taking classes for continuing education or graduate level classes. So uh, that has been reduced. Contractually, the town does only require um, is required to budget 13,500. We have been budgeting a little high in the past. Um, my next item is recruitment, 52215. Um, so Claudia, are you asking that 51214 go from 8,500 8, to 135? Um, I'm looking on page eight, go from 14,000 to 8.5. But are you looking at 8.5 to go to 13.5? No, I'm looking at a reduction from 14 to 8.5. I don't see 13. No, but you said 
said you had said something about oh, oh that the contractual obligation for tuition reimbursement it totals thirteen thousand five hundred for two or three contracts. I was just giving you that as kind of factual piece of information. Okay. And I think that's why we've budgeted fourteen thousand in the past. Okay. But it's never it's never spent. Would we would be would we be in violation of any of those contracts if we underfunded to eighty five hundred? Um. I would have to check contract language uh, more in depth to, to answer that question for you. Um, I, I'm not sure if the wording says it has to be available or it has to be budgeted. We used to um, underfund it, Mike, before. Um, and it's it's a roll of the dice, like anything, you know. Uh, you, tr you know, you try to average out who tends to take advantage of it, but if it ends up that we guess wrong, then you're gonna have to fund it. You can't say right. no. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. And maybe if Mike O'Neill's still on, we could get the uh, 21, 20, 21, 22 actuals in that line. Zero. Huh. I, I do have a request for $4,000 uh, once classes are completed by. Uh, police officers at the moment. Okay. But it's true there, there has not been, you know, the employees have not been taking advantage of that, of that benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else, Claudia? Uh, can I move on? Let me move on to the next item, 52214, which is recruitment. This is an increase of $11,000, and it's the result of two significant changes um, that address, addresses best practices and town policy, and that is the implementing implementation of pre-employment physicals and drug tests for part-time seasonal park and rec employees. In the past, they have not been background checked or they have not had a physical, they have not been drug tested, um, but it is not a, a good practice to continue. And it, it uh, we do have a drug-free workplace policy, so we should be ensuring our, our employees start on board drug-free. So I have a question about that. So if we, it, you said it's a town policy, you mean that the, the um, the town policy is like the drug-free policy or that all employees need to get physicals. And um, it was the other piece, the physicals, the drug testing, and, and what was the third thing? The third thing is the background check. Oh, yeah, background. Uh, prior, prior to my coming on board, the police department performed the background checks and they would take anywhere from two to three weeks they were significantly holding up our hiring process. Um, the prior town manager, I uh, did some research, pulled in some proposals from other towns who were using different vendors. We decided on a, sh a sure hire and we get a turnaround background check um, anywhere from two to three days, uh, a cost of anywhere from 45 to $65 per background check. Okay. And it, so for the seasonal employees, this is um, like parks and rec, like I'm, th I'm picturing lifeguards and maybe the extra, um, I don't know if they do more landscaping and stuff like that. Is that, that's the sort of seasonal employment? Correct. Physical, we do have physical services, seasonal, physical service seasonal in the past were given physical, had to get physicals and drug tests and background checks. And the ter termination was made that park and rec should also be doing the same. We should be doing, it's a good practice, um, not only from workers' compensation perspective, but these are staff, these are employees that are working with children. Oh yeah, I do think the background check is very important. It's just the physical seems like a little bit like much. And I don't know, like if do you use like a contractor who kind of takes care of all of it or is it like three different pieces? 
We have MedWorks that takes care of our physicals and our drug tests. So that's, we, <clears throat> the new employee will make an appointment with MedWorks and they go to MedWorks and they get both of those um, um, processes performed there and MedWorks sends the results directly to HR. And that's usually within 24 to 48 hours as well. Okay. It seems like the physicals are unnecessary, but I, I mean, I, I definitely think the background checks are important, obviously, because a lot of them are kids, but, um, and has the legalization of cannabis in Connecticut had a, has, you know, changed anything with regard to the drug-free policy or is, are you, are they testing for drugs other than marijuana? They're testing for all illegal drugs at MedWorks. Um, yes, has the legal of, legalization of marijuana affected um, drug testing outcomes? Yes, it has. We've had a handful of new employees that tested positive. Um, when they are sat down at the new hiring uh, onboarding session, it, they're given strict, well, they're, they're advised of, they're strongly advised of our drug free workplace policy and that there is a no tolerance for use of marijuana during, during the day, during the, the workplace. All right, thanks. They're not to come to work smelling like marijuana. I mean, it, it's comparable to alcohol. They're not to use alcohol during the work day. They're not to come to work smelling of alcohol. Um, it's, it's new territory. I've been working with my HR colleagues about it to, to create a new policy um, that's, that's in the works. Okay. Hey, Mary, I just wanted to address the physical part of it. Just think about a temporary employee from a workers' comp standpoint, coming in and, and they immediately put a claim in the day after working with us. And they were from the start, they are physically fit to work for us before putting a claim in. <clears throat> yeah, okay. I guess I'm picturing like like 18 year olds. Yeah, but, but it does help. Yeah, okay. That That's, it. yes. Uh, Councillor Biggs, you're absolutely correct. The physical is, is the concern on the workers' comp injury side. We're protecting the town by, by requiring them to have a physical. Okay. Um, if you're all set with no questions with recruitment, we can remove, move to support services. Uh, that's a reduction of $1,000. I calculated it, it was uh, over budgeted. And then finally, labor relations, $522. <coughs> Number five, two, two. Claudia, Claudia, Claudia. I'm gonna take that one, that's not you. Okay. All right, oh. that's attorney Ken Plum. And you will see that I increased it. I know Tom and I had a discussion about this and I said, you're kidding yourselves. If you budget it as low as you've been budgeting the town attorney and the labor attorney, you are absolutely kidding yourself with the amount of lawsuits we have or personnel matters coming up. So I put it up where I really think it should be and that's at 125 and I know that's a huge, huge increase, but our bills are just, we got a lot of personnel issues. And um, I just think you're kidding yourself if you lower it a lot. Yeah, Bonnie, to your point, if they go to page nine, uh, expended year to date is 111,000. I was just going to say that. Yeah. But historically, we didn't always have this situation. So, well, the last, I'd say, well, it's all well, my fault. It started when I got here. No, I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> some of it did. No, yeah. no, that's not true. <laughs> 18 to 19, it was 37, then it went to 54. Yeah. Yeah, you got a couple coming up. Yeah, no. I... We've been fortunate. Karma, our uh, insurance uh, liability coverage has been taking care of quite a, well, a good chunk of the, the legal fees, but not all of them.
All right, that's it. I think anybody else, Claudia? Thank you, Madam. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council. Thanks. Thank you, Claudia. Welcome. All right, really, really, really quick, Charles. Um, as Steve said, the zoning enforcement officer by charter really reports to the manager. So I don't know how Steve ever got it in his budget. So I did move everything over. And Charles, if you could very, very quickly just highlight the items that are in the budget on page eight. Good night, everyone. <laughs> on page eight, I will start by looking at item number 52207. And that's um, legal advertisement for the Zoning Board of Appeals. We have 2691 uh, between July 1st, 2021 and March 30th this year, we expended $2,784.57 for legal advertisement. Now, legal advertisement is a statutory requirement. Um, we can uh, attempt to, well, first of all, we are looking at a budget of at least 3,000 for the upcoming year, for the current year, I should say. We can, we can try to um, keep within that $3,000 and I'm, I'm pretty sure that we can if we uh, reduce the wording, reduce the words that, because uh, the newspapers charge by the wording. So if we can reduce that, and um, I think we could reduce that to some extent. Um, also, I was told that the rate of advertising went up during this past year, like most other things. So. That's one thing. Um, then a quick look at uh, ZEO training. Uh, we have, I think we moved from 200 to 550. And I had said earlier that we could, um, we could further reduce that to 440, which is not much anyway, but um, we could do that possibly. Um, a quick look at uh, uniforms. We have six hundred dollars. That could take a cut to three hundred or four hundred dollars. Um, so, so that's pretty much what I have. Bonnie. Anybody with any questions for Charles? I think you're lucking out, Charles. It's late at night, not much of a budget. You've actually talked about two places where we could cut, so. Good start. Yes. Thank you, Charles. Okay. Good night. Good Thank night. You. Good night. Good night, Thanks, Charles. Um, all right, so for the other items, I gave Michael a copy of Fred's contract. So Michael knows he's going to have to adjust some of the items under the town manager with salaries and benefits and things like that. Um, I don't know there's, if there's, there's not really much in here. I know we're going to have to uh, raise up a little bit under travel and training because of the ICMA conference. Um, so we'll have to boost that a little bit. That's, I don't know, everything else I think has pretty much been talked about. And then on page six, last but no means least, town council, I left your salary alone, is that okay? <laughs> so there you isn't much time. here. <laughs> there isn't much here at all. I mean, you know, you got to do the audit. There's dues for CROG, CCM. 
which we're involved with and printing. So I don't know, there's nothing really here either. You guys have a fairly small budget. So I don't know if anybody has questions there. And then that does it. Well, no, I had a question because I think we're also members of cost and I don't know, and this was something that oh, shared yep. up with Michael. I don't know if Mike, it's in finance or if we're- uh -uh. Mike, usually it's here. Did you itemize that or no? Because usually we, I mean, it doesn't cost that much, but- Not in finance. All right, so I'll get you what that is. It's very minimal. And we'll put it in there, Mayor. Okay. Are, are, we, are we taking advantage of the CROG and the CCM? I am. Or I mean, you know, I, I don't get involved with that, but are you? Are we, are we getting our Mike money? And, Mike That's and fine. I do CCM. Um, I mean, they do a lot of training that they're not charging for us, which I make sure I send to all the other department heads. Um, and Prague, I, I've are, always been very the, involved in municipal services. Are the departments taking advantage of some of the training? Some of them, yeah. Okay. Cost is doing a lot of um, training now too. Um, and not charging. Um, CCM really is a lobbying. They're really lobbying on behalf of all the communities. But they have other things. Krog is more, they do a lot with us with regional planning. Don't come out of Krog because Krog was just de designated by the state as not just Krog, but all the COGS, all the capital, um, all the council of governments, I'm sorry have been designated by the state to be the funnel of <clears throat> rank ordering all the federal grants. Right. So you don't want to get out of CROG because we're going to no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting we get out. I'm just, you know, it's $40,000. I just want to yeah. make sure we're using it, you know. Yeah. I, myself, I, I haven't, I've gone to like one training class, I think, you know. Departments too. Yeah, okay. Mike goes to policy board. I go to municipal services. Derek goes to transportation committee. So we're very involved, that's for sure. Okay. And I've already sent things over to Fred about Krog and how beneficial they are. So I'll get him involved. Mike, where would Kerma fall under? That's in uh, 192 insurance. We'll do that Thursday. All right, 193. 193. Oops. Workers' comp is in every department, but the, the lap policy and the deductibles are, uh, are in 193. Okay. We didn't follow the schedule. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah, but you didn't do bad for how bogged down you were. I figured we'd be here until 11. We all done? Yeah, that's it for tonight. Yes, thank you, Cheryl, for hanging in with us. <laughs> and, and Sue. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, Sue, too. And then who do we have? Who's the phone number? You're welcome. I don't know. Two eight zero fifty seven thirty four. They're not unmuting, so they wish to remain anonymous. Maybe they fell asleep. On. <laughs> I think they've been on all night too. Uh, I don't know what it is. Do we need a motion to adjourn, Mayor? Yep, you do. Yeah. I believe so. So moved. So moved. Second. I'll second it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.
I love you all, but I'm glad I don't have to see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. See you Thursday. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night.